G'day, denizens of the Mortal Realms. It is AOS Coach Part 2, and I want you to get back into that Castle Light formation because this is the elf-focused Cities of Sigmar discussion. We have our new battle tome. We've already had a human-focused discussion with Bart, so if you haven't seen that, I highly recommend check it out after this particular video. But I'm here with Freddie Leggett, and um, we are going to have a discussion that is going to layer onto the first one, which was that human element. But I want to get into the into the weeds when it comes to elves because when you look at this particular battle tome and we'll set it up, we'll give our thoughts and yada yada yada. It's a big book. There's eleven sub factions. There is a heap of war scrolls, and it's very easy to get into analysis paralysis. So, for the purposes of trying to break this battle tome and get some thoughts behind it, we will have three videos. This being the second one, being an elf focus. That's not to say that you can't have a mixed force. It's not to say that you can't have dwarves in your faction. But just to make things really simple, this is the elf show. But Freddy is an absolute champion, has been a top performing cities player for a while now, has been on my radar for a long time, and I'm happy to have his debut. Welcome. Introduce yourself. Who are you? Where are you from? And let's talk cities. Yeah, well, thank, thank you very much for having me. Uh, my name's uh, Fred Leggett, uh, play out of uh, the UK uh, in the derby scene. So uh, uh, we play as part of Team Bash. So we've got about 20, 30 uh, uh, local players at the minute now. So our, our, our local scene is booming. Um, but yeah, I'm just um, sort of uh, part of uh, part of the big UK scene at the minute. So uh, do, doing well, uh, did well last year and just enjoyed just playing my cities, to be honest. There, there's such a good book. There's such a deep book, and I'll get your motivations in a second. But uh, I, I'm, a, I've at least been into Derby at least once, so I was had the pleasure of going. <laughs> you to know the, where it is, yeah. Yeah, I, I went to Blood and Glory back when uh, was it 2018 uh -huh. or 17 when Ben did it at the Roundhouse. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, got to got to see uh, Der Derby's finest and have a delicious curry and like you know, it's, it's a lovely, lovely yeah, little yeah. place. Yeah, it's a fantastic place to be. So, uh, yeah, and literally about 20 minutes away from uh, Warhammer World. So you, you can't really argue with that. That was one of the highlights because I, I flew yeah. in. I went to Nottingham, had a game on the Friday, played on the um, the, the GW, like the fancy tables, and then yeah. swung it over and um, got to hang out at Blood and Glory. Man, that, that was a cool tournament. Uh, yeah. I feel like it's part before your time, maybe. It was, yeah. I, I mean, I started to see probably about six months before covid so uh it, yeah and then so but I, I've, I've been hitting it hard since then so yeah maybe so let's we'll talk back. yeah look, maybe you'll come back it was like an 80 player tournament it was actually really <laughs> cool it was like 40k as well and all in like underworlds <laughs> debut there but let's talk cities because uh that's why we're here um i was yep. just looking i was just revisiting my old book i actually got the limited edition one i actually i'm like holy shite um so I'm OG. I, I love cities, but this is not about me. It's about you, Freddie. So talk to me about cities, your journey. Why do you play them? What do you like about them? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I was one of the old um, Empire players. So back when I was a kid, I I, I ran uh, I ran Empires. So all all the knights and all the hand gunners and all that lot. And um, yeah, once I joined the scene and and started uh, playing around with armies, uh, I, I was talking to Big Phil. Um, and, and he started telling me to gear up for a uh, be a bit more competitive. So I saw my cities on the on the shelf, and I thought, maybe you know, maybe I could convert all of my old empire into something cities, and and then sort of go from there. So that's where my sort of list building journey went. So you'll probably see all, all my results from back from like I don't know uh, end of twenty twenty one sort of thing, and and basically my progression of every list is different, basically. Um, as you sort of and that's the sort of beauty with old cities it just um uh, no lists are ever the same it was always just um your idea and 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 basically just trying to create it into whatever unit you could imagine you could fit it into into that sort of style so i used to love the old book it was i honestly i thought it was the best book um G, a gw ever written just because the power came from the allegiance abilities and not from the actual units it was you know any unit could be become you know basically the most powerful unit in the game which i found was hilarious you know it was um yeah there was something so satisfying about you know getting like a free guild guard putting about eight buffs on them and then sending them out and no one wants to fight them 
Um, and and that, that to me was uh, what made City such a good book. So talk to me about the new book because you've told me how yeah. you really enjoyed the old book. Um, and yeah. a lot has changed. A lot has changed. There's some things that it are has. the same and we will go to the changes. But how do you feel about this new book? Like, uh, you know, how, some of the units are gone, especially as an elf player. You've lost a yes. fair few units. Um, allegiances are fundamentally changed. What's your general feel so far? Um, my general feel so far is it's a, it's a lot more positive when I first read the book. I think uh, I think the first thing I turned to was the coalition, and once that was gone, I was I was a bit heartbroken. But now, now it's uh, now uh, I've had time to read the book. I actually think it's in a brilliant place. Again, a lot of powers in the allegiance abilities, but I think now this time the war scrolls are actually in a better place. Um, so I, I think it's a great position to be in. Again, we can still do every sort of build, so you know cavalry builds, shooting builds, uh, melee builds. So whatever you want to do now, I think you can still do like with the old book. And I guess that that's one of the strengths, right? Is that if you really like playing cities, as I say, shooting, of course you yeah. like playing cities. If you like yeah. playing shooting, there's something for you. If you want to play a magic focused army, there's something for you. If you want to run you know, lots of, lots of troops, like, you know, just bodies and bodies and bodies, there's absolutely something for you. Uh, monsters, they're still in the game. So yeah. um, it does create some really cool list construction but it also can create a lot of confusion because you go down yes. this rabbit hole of chasing and trying to find units and what synergizes and you get distracted and you kind of go over here and then like you're over your points. So it's a, it's a list builder's dream and nightmare. Absolutely. Yeah. And I'm sure it's, I'm very kind of, in a way, I'm glad that the coalition's gone now because I don't have to read six other books. It's just now I can just focus in on, on the city's books and, and the good units within that. So yeah, in, in a way it's a help the list building. All right. All right. Don't, don't, don't ruin Christmas. So we're going to talk at coalition and that just in, yeah, in a minute. Right. That's all right. We're, we're excited. We, we look, the books literally come out. Oh, and by the way, um, I did this reminder on the first video. I'll do it again. This book has literally gone up to pre-order in the last couple of days. So I just want to highlight that things that we say may change in an errata points may adjust i i don't imagine the elf side of the book is going to change much certainly there's some things in the human side where it's like eh, pope you're a little too cheap eh, fusilers maybe maybe there's a little bit too many shenanigans where you shouldn't move but actually you can like there's just a whole bunch of shenanigans that i feel like may get tweaked do you feel the same way freddie or yeah or am I, I, just... think, I think no no i think absolutely i think i think I think at the minute the elves are, are, are pointed aggressively, so um, yeah, there, there may be some sort of slight tweaks, but yeah, it's uh, yeah, I, I don't think there's any wholesale changes. No, no, I, I think the elves are in a good spot. The Duarte, and actually, you know what? That's probably a good question that I probably should ask you. How did you feel about the elves? Because all of the lead up to cities has been about the humans. They've been previewing the humans. And I know in the Facebook groups, especially people were like, what's happening to Duarte and what's happening to the elves? Are they getting split out? And, you know, the elves going into Sylvaneth and to, you know, Daughters of Cain and like, what's going on? There was no new models. So is that like, no. what's your take on all this? Um, Choice, I wasn't too concerned. I, I know this sort of, um, the range of of the dark elves and 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 all that sort of so so extensive that um you know it, it had that sort of backing of of all the sort of flavors and um so i wasn't too concerned about all the glory going to the humans because you know, everyone likes playing humans and um so uh yeah I, i'm happy with where they are at the minute and um yeah i'm glad that they didn't get hit as hard as you know all the wood elves and phoenix guard and yeah we'll get to that yeah. but <laughs> yeah we will get to that uh we will get to that because some of you like the people who like your woody woody type elves or your high type elves um they got a little harder an rip to our frost phoenix and our, our phoenix guard yeah. um that made me a little bit sad but hey we have now have a unit of black guard although i don't know quite yeah. know what i'm gonna do with my phoenix phoenixes just yet yeah, maybe you could turn it into a griffin or something. But yeah, it's it's gonna be uh maybe a maybe a black dragon. Maybe if you get some interesting conversions going. All right, let's talk about the book. Let's talk a little bit yep. about the elves and the book in general, and then we'll get to the rules. 
a lot of your units have pre-existed. So they've come from the old book to the new book. So is there any particular units that you think have gotten a glow up, things that you really like in, in the new iteration, or is what was good before still good today? No, I think I think um, from a dark elf point of view, it's been a it's a it's been a massive glow up um, in terms of in terms of unit. I don't think previously you ever really saw dark elves on on the table, except maybe for dark shards or, or you know some brave man going for uh, um, some executioners. Um, you really only ever saw them as like dread spears as like a cheap battle line unit. Um, but now I definitely think there are there are routes um, to com like a competitive build with them. Um, so I think in terms of like corsairs now. Um, I think Corsairs now have had a massive glow up. Um, um, even you know all the monsters, the Charybdis, Hydra, um, stuff that was mocked at. I think now actually have a a play uh, uh, a role in the army now that I, I think actually is uh, worth exploring a bit more. Was was there any other units that kind of glow up? Uh, there's a couple that I I've got a little list yeah. of things that I prepared. I'm like, oh, because I'm not a big yeah. elf player to be honest. Like I play mostly humans. I've got like twenty thousand points of human. <laughs> so for me, yeah. that's my jam. And like occasionally go into Phoenix Guard and Phoenixes. But was there any other el units that kind of stood yeah. out to you? Yeah, there's quite a few to be honest. I think um, Scourge Runner Chariots now I think are are far more reliable than they used to be. A lot of very reliable to output damage now. Um, Black Guard I think are, are brilliant um for, for their points um i think even now um uh, the drakes for knights uh have, they've improved their damage output now while still keeping their saves so i think that's brilliant um yeah i think even drakes for not um chariots i think now they actually have a role as well so um i think it's a brilliant position now um uh the dark elf sort of side of uh, of, of the book so, so Freddie, here's my thoughts and you tell me if I'm on the mark. So yeah. um, some things that I really liked was the War Hydra now heals a flat five wounds at the end of combat. Um, so it's both combat phases, yeah. which I think yeah. is really Massive. cool. And because it used to heal D3 at the start of your hero phase. So it's yeah, just it's constantly awesome. pinning you down, grinding you and just being annoying. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, yeah I, th I think that's a cool change. Um, the Dreadlord still gives you re-rolls to charge for Order Serpentis, which I'm surprised considering how re-rolls are being removed from the game. So that's really cool. Yep, absolutely. The Drake Spawn yeah. Chariot doing Mortal Wounds uh, on yeah, Impact. And, yeah, and they're reliable Mortal Wounds as well. And uh, is it three on the sixes do Mortal Wounds? Uh, so, uh, three Mortal Wounds on sixes. Is it on the charge or? Uh, is it you roll two? Oh, let me bring up yeah, the wall scroll. But it, yeah. Yeah. If it's within three Wait. inches of a Drake Spawn, Drake Spawn Knight unit, you get an extra dice, is, is it? Um, you get this a little boost. Uh, I'm bringing... Yes, yeah, so you roll two uh, dice, and then for every five up, um, you suffer three mortal wounds. And then you add <laughs> two to the dice roll, there's Drake Spawn Knights nearby. So huge. So you're doing, mortals. So you're doing mortals on threes. Uh, yeah. if you're within three inches of a Drake Spawn Knight. That's hot. Which is, yeah, which is actually very doable uh, in, in the build I'll show you in a bit later. A couple of other ones that I really liked is the Dark Riders can shut off command abilities when it's within 12 inches on a 5-up. Yes, yeah, it's, uh, it's a it's a lovely change uh, from, I mean, everyone tried to get them in for the minus one bravery bubble from last year, but... Uh, yeah, I, I think now they've got Retreat and Shoot as well. I think, uh, yeah, re really good unit now. The other one that kind of caught me off, because the Black Ark Fleet Master used to have a command ability, and it's now just if you do all-out attack with the Fleet Master, it gives you plus one attack and all-out all out, all out attack. So I was looking at it going, right, give you give your Corsairs like double blades. They're on four attacks. Hit them yeah. on a frost for like red minus three, and it's just like absolutely <laughs> yeah, ridiculous. Blitz. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the thing is, it's, and there's also, you know, that um, elven spell where you can turn off saves in, entirely. So, yeah, so they, they absolutely mint. So is it fair to say that even though the cities mostly were talked about with humans, humans and fusilers and, you know, all of these cool, you know, human models, there's actually some really good place still in the elves? Oh, absolutely. I think I think it's the best place that the Dark Elves have ever been with, with the city. So, yeah, really, really good time to uh, to get those uh, the old models out. Yeah, I, I, I agree wholeheartedly. 
So let's talk rules. Let's actually get into the weeds here where we've already started spoiling Christmas and Freddie said that we lost our coalition. So there was a whole fundamental change where um, the old cities book had some rules. Uh, you could generate extra CP if you had like a sub commander near a sub commander. You have a uh, old coalition where you could do one in four with, with Stormcast. Um, some of the cities also had like one in four with Sylvaneth, one in four with KO. Uh, there was a whole bunch of other things, but fundamentally, they're gone. It's completely rewritten. Freddie, how do you feel about this? Um, so like, like I said before, I was I was a bit heartbroken with the coalition units. I thought when I first read it, I thought it, it completely destroyed sort of like the lift building sort of design of what I used to love. Um, but uh, it, all they've done now is just the the power is now in the allegiance abilities and also now in the war scrolls where previously you had to go looking elsewhere for power in the book because generally the units weren't uh of the same level as say the storm cast and the lumineth and, and that sort of stuff so um coalition yeah um it was fine now but i think like i used to like the old bodyguard rule i used to use it all the time the little yeah. uh four up uh uh, pass off the little extra CPs were always nice, and uh, yeah, um, the mount train as well, the soaring guardian, so that's gone now as well. Um, so yeah, it, uh, the, the, I'm happy with the changes to be honest. Uh, I think uh, look, look, over the time now, it's actually been a, a good improvement, even though we lost some things. I think we're still in a better position. I do admit, I'll miss yeah. my one in four storm cast, which allowed me to bring <laughs> in a unit of like reinforced forminators or dragons. It allowed me to bring Krondus or Karazai. It allowed yeah. me to bring in a Lariel into, into a, a living city list. But um, what I lost from Coalition, I feel like I've gained in this battle tone with Allegiance abilities, spells, and just other things. Yes, exactly. And Allegiance abilities have changed a lot. Yeah. A lot. Which brings me to the dead pile. So we lost a lot of things. Ignore the Cogsmith. Cogsmith's still in the game. That's just a human error. Sorry, Cogsmith. You're basically dead to us anyway. I don't think anyone's run a Cogsmith in the in the entire game. Uh, I'm sorry, but I'm also not sorry. But elves lost the most. Like elves did, and free yeah. guild, elves and free guild. So like you lost your anointed, you lost your phoenix versions, you lost your phoenix guard, you lost anything that was wood elves, like your sisters of the thorn, sisters of the watch. You lost your nomad prince and your shadow warriors, and there's a lot of dead pile here that's no longer in the game. Um, what are your thoughts and how do you feel about all this? Uh, well, I was, I was a little bit hurt. I mean, I, I lost about five thousand points worth of uh, free guild and and, and elves. Um, uh, I. It, it it felt a bit harsh to be honest. I, I I'd love some of them units still be in the game. I thought they used, they did have a place. I understand it's gone to the old world now, but uh, yeah, I was I was a little bit heartbroken, especially with the wood elves. I did really used to love the models and and the sort of the aesthetics. I I definitely am surprised Demigriff Knights got done. I think if 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 I was a yeah. betting man, I would have said Demigriffs would have stayed. So I'm surprised. Uh, but I'm now just thinking about how do I make these into like I don't know Forminators or some type of Stormcast type of mount. What are you going to do with your your elves that are kind of like no longer going to uh, be around? I think, uh... I think most of the uh, so I've got a lot of um, like I've got two sisters of thorns and and lots of gla um, the old like glade guard so that can all be black guard. Um, a lot of this can slide quite nicely into the sort of dark elves. So you know uh, the eternal guard can easily be um, the dread spears or or um, black guard. You can easily slide the wood uh, rangers into like executioners. So um, yeah, there's still. Um, I think uh, GW said on their like, uh, community page that they're happy for proxying uh, at tournaments uh, with Cities of Sigma old units. So, um, yeah, I mean, as long as it's not absolutely bonkers sort of uh, changes, uh, I'm very happy to be able to move my models into uh, into these sort of new roles. Yeah, I think uh, you'll see most tournaments are pretty okay with uh, a proxy. And traditionally, you would normally not see proxies. So can I use model a as model b and the answer is normally no without a, a series of kit bashing and converting but i think in cities um as people try to create their own story and their narrative and yeah. a lot of these units i think the characteristics are very similar as you said great swords could be executioners um yeah phoenix guard could be executioners there is obviously like we were talking offline like what are we going to do with our phoenixes i don't know yet yeah that, that's the hard one yeah 
I don't know yet, but like you could, you know, could turn your uh, anointed into a uh, free guild marshal, you know, like re reliquy. Like you could do something like that. Yeah, it's, uh, it's I'm, I'm glad it's uh, there are opportunities. I was, I was a bit hurt about the uh, like pistoliers and stuff and outriders because again, that's gonna be hard to try and transfer it into something. But I mean, I've got about fifty pistoliers and outriders, so I've got to find a home for them somewhere. Yeah, th th there's no direct replacement for those pistoliers or handgunners. So it's like no. the pistoliers are the outriders. I'm like, oh man, oh well, you're you're gonna go help <laughs> yeah. me fight chaos. You're gonna go help fight, fight chaos in the old world. But yeah, from what I'm what I'm hearing, a little bit of sadness but there's going to be uh conversion proxy opportunities so yeah we'll, we'll see how it goes but we got a whole bunch of new units now freddie i'm going to give you my rapid fire like it or don't like it segment because otherwise yep. we'll be here till christmas trying yep. to go through every single war scroll okay we're going to do yep. like it or lo don't like it and you tell me why you like it or you don't like it are you ready? Ready to play this one? Iron Wield Great Cannon. I I like it. Um, maybe not competitive wise, but I, I it just aesthetically wise, it thinks it's bang on where a city should be. Love it. Little point adjustment, and I think I'm taking one or two. It's a little too expensive for me right now. Your free guild steel helms. I I don't like it. I, I, I get their purpose, but uh, I'd rather take the, the like, I think the Dark Elf side is better and, and cheaper for what you want it to do. Fair enough, fair enough. Uh, I will be at least trying them with old free guild heads with their hats and their feathers. So uh, <laughs> I, there's there is a yeah. distinct lack of beards in that group. So I, I need more beards going on in my free guild. Probably one of the most undercosted units in this book. It's the Alchemite Warforger. Like it or don't like it? I like it. Yeah. It's um, yeah, I, it could do so much, and uh, uh, and uh, uh, yeah, I I can't say a bad thing about him to be honest. Yeah, plus one save. Uh, has a good spell to do mortal wounds. Although yeah. a lot of it is human focused, right? So it you're... is. It's a, there is a slight bit of a sort of um, some like uh, locking of 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 races, um, which is a little bit of a slight shame. But uh, yeah, uh, he, well, for what he does to the human side, is is brilliant. For an elf side, it's not going to impact you that much, no. but you know, you probably won't build a thousand, uh, two thousand points of pure elves anyway. Like you probably will mix and match a little bit if you want to. Obviously, you can, but you will probably draw from different parts of the book and have a flavorful faction. What about your free guild marshal and relic envoy? I like it. Yeah. Um, again, I think for free guild builds, um, it works. Um, not not so much uh, for for the elven sides. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna tweak this question. So I want to I want to like it or don't like it. But would you do it in a elven focused army? So all right. So right. So let, let's let's keep it like that because otherwise it's yeah. like yeah it's good but it's not relevant for elves. Yeah. Like, okay, I yeah. get it. Uh, so the marshal, if you're gonna take a unit of steel helms or fusilers or whatever something that's gonna support your elves, amazing. If you're taking pure elves, nah. What about your um, Cavalier Marshal, the hero on um, horse? Yeah, I, 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 I like him. Um, I actually think he can sort of run by himself uh, just as a, or even, well, you know, a couple bit of the extra cavalry to supplement your, your main uh, elven army. So, uh, yeah, I, I really like him as a, as a unit. Um, I think he adds some um, sort of good... Um, good bit of synergy well not synergy so much but an extra uh thing to deal with for the opponent on that same theme you've got your free guild cavaliers which is the uh the knights do you like them and would you take them over your your um drake spawn knights because i feel like there's two yeah. roles that have a very similar kind of feel yeah they've got different rules but they they play a similar role they do i think um i think uh the cavaliers I think can uh well they they put out a lot more output. I think um the sort of the sort of uh, buffs and sort of synergies you can get on them. I, I think uh I thought and Drakesborn Knights are more of like a pinning unit and more of a like a screening unit where I'd actually use more the Cavaliers as actually uh, the main hit. Um yeah, I I think you you were, you use them both as as like a heavy movement sort of build, um and what make them work together. 
do you see a world where maybe you you take them both like you run like a full yeah. cav list you have maybe a dreadlord on black dragon a bunch of you know drake spawn chariots and drake spawn knights and maybe some um some of the cavaliers as well yeah absolutely i think i think you could easily make a a, a quite a competitive build i think especially in sort of some certain sub factions um i think that sort of build can be very viable I was thinking the free guild cavaliers might have a better move, but no, they're a base move of ten, so they're exactly the same yeah. as the um, the Drake spawn. Okay, that's good. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah. It's reliable. What about the Pope uh, Pontifex uh, Zenestra, the matriarch of the Great yeah. Wheel? And we're going to put our elf yeah. hat on for a second. Uh, yeah, what? I mean, phew, elf focus. Um, I mean, it's a brilliant, brilliant unit. Um, it's just a shame all the bonuses are are mainly on humans um but the the extra ability to do mortal wounds to priests and wizards is still brilliant it's sort of a you could create your sort of a elven castle and then just start picking off the wizards in the backfield with him yeah i, I think he could definitely sort of uh, complement your army it's a, look it's a great little unit it's got a four up ward it has plus one to cast i oh, know plus one to unbind spells and yeah. uh and it can do some cool things um you're right it, it's great for picking out wizards and priests but the other abilities like the plus two to move the uh ward for five up is human only so this might be a reason why you do a blended force where you have maybe 60 yeah. percent or 70 percent of your points into your elves and then you might put 20 to 30 percent of your army into humans like some free guild screens some cavaliers like some some human type stuff what about some of the what about some of the other big heroes like the um the lioness of the parch uh talia vendra I, I don't like her, I'm afraid. It's, uh, I mean, from a, uh, an aesthetics point of view, I think she's absolutely beautiful. Um, but um, I just wish she had a four up save or something like what the old Frost Heart Phoenix had, something a bit more um, sort of um, sustain on the on the table. Uh, it just feels like a four up save and a six up war just is just going to melt. Yeah, I mean, she yeah, she's got fifteen wounds. That's not too bad. That's not too bad um and she has some she has some abilities but i think you're right like talking to bart earlier today um like it sounds kind of cool but I, I, right now we're like we're a bit mm, you're competing mm, with yeah. like the free guild general on griffin you're probably competing with the dreadlord on black dragon um and i imagine for syn synergy wise you go on the free uh, the, you're going for the, the um the dreadlord on black dragon exactly yeah um yeah talia doesn't quite provide enough synergies with with humans let alone elves to to make me really warrant bringing one she has some cool rules she can she can make she a monster cool fight rules. fight last on a three up a monstrous rampage um she has a ability where she can issue two orders um in the hero phase which is great or sorry in your um your return yeah. but the rest of it you're right it's like human ability or yeah, I'd, I'd just love a three-up save on that one. I think that would that would be much better. Well, there's Scorpion Stinger, two attacks, Ren three, D three plus three damage, unwounded. It's not bad. Yes, oh, I, I, it's hard. Yeah, I'm not disagreeing with that. All right, maybe the last question is because um, there's some other things that I get the feeling I already know, like the Wild Corpse Hunter. You're gonna be like don't care yeah but <laughs> although although though it has a pre-game move which isn't too bad like it might, it might it be a little nice. independent just independent doesn't matter if your elf just could be a little objective scorer but, yeah, but the human gob, the human gobba palooza the um the command corp yeah yeah i i, I really like it as a as, as a group um as as a bunch of a, of, of crazy sort of uh buffs and and, and um but again, it's, it's quite heavily human related, but I still think some of the abilities that it has um, are still pretty good in, in non sort of uh, cities builds, well, uh, human builds. So given that a lot of these units are all human, right? And uh, mm -hmm. I'm hearing from you, a lot of them are cool, but they don't synergize. That's what I'm hearing. Like it's like cool, yeah. But, yeah. but ballpark me here. Are all of your lists a hundred percent elf? Are you mixing in and trying to bring in some human elements to your list, or is what's what's the science behind how you build your army so, and the units? 
So all my lists I've provided uh, are fully elves, but I think you could definitely uh, supplement uh, with with certain um, human um, side units, especially sort of the battle mages and and uh, sort of the battle mage on on griffin that sort of side of things. I definitely think there's sort of or even like a great cannon or steam tanks or or some sort of uh, um, extra sort of synergy. But it seems that the elves don't need the synergy where the humans do to make them function. So I feel like if uh, if you want human units to, to do work in sort of damage and or output, you need the uh, support pieces to be a part of that, where I think with with the Dark Elf side of things, the units actually stand alone a bit better. Um, so I just think you've got to be careful what human stuff you bring in that doesn't need as much sort of support from its uh, from the hero side of things. Are you more likely to bring in the Dwarden or are you more likely to bring in humans if you're stepping out of the elf side of the book? I think I'm more stepping into sort of the human side of things. I think um, I think some of the abilities are, are sort of not game winning, but they're, they're just very strong. Uh, I think I think they're uh, I, I love what they've done now with the battle mages and, and that sort of stuff. So I definitely think I'd, I'd slide and like the Hurricanums, Lunar Arcs, that, that sort of side of things. I, that's where I'd slide towards, I think. Okay, so you're looking you're looking for more independent pieces that doesn't yes. require multiple investments as opposed to I'm um, building a block of X, it's gonna need Y and then this thing to issue orders to it and like all of a sudden yeah. you're now at five hundred points that you didn't really want to spend. No, because I don't think you need to to make a um a, a competent army now in in cities. Um yeah, it just it just needs to the points you need to spend are need to be, you know, doing work. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I I can I can agree with you. So there is a bunch of cities, and we will go through them when the rules come up in due time. But what's really cool is, and I, I again I'll get your opinion in a second. But there is a whole bunch of uh, new cities. So Vindicarum is a new city. Um, Hammer Hall has been split up into two. A lot of the characteristics have either changed or been tweaked. So like Hallow Heart and Settler's Gain are still wizardy type cities, but they fundamentally change from what they used to be. You have lost the Phoenician, you have lost Harkuron, uh, Anvil Guard technically because it kind of changed over in Broken Realms. But have you felt like you've lost any options or builds because of the change in the cities or have you now just only unlocked things? No, I don't think, uh, I don't think there's any... Um any main losses i don't think um i think they've actually done it very well how they've um, how they've laid out the um how they laid out the sub factions and 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 the roles uh, um each each one is basically promoting a, a certain side or another unit or whatever it may be so i actually really like how they've uh, they've done the uh, sub factions and and without getting into the rules what's your favorite miss haven for me all right i like it I'm obsessed with uh, Vindicarum at the moment, but that's because I own 140 <laughs> flagellants. Um, yes. No, I'm, I'm going to keep saying why. it. I'm just going to keep saying it because when I get to a tournament, someone goes, oh, you're a bandwagon. You just want to do zombies. Like, nah, I've owned these since 2018. I'm OG. OG flagellant. Yeah. Uh, like Monty Python with their flagellants. I am OG when it comes to them. But this is the big piece, right? So we lost like the honored retinue. We lost the the one in four coalition. We lost a whole bunch of things from the old book. This is the one ability. Cities has this mechanism called orders. And there's a couple of things, and I'll get you to explain it in a minute and what it means to you. And then we'll bring up the actual orders you could issue. But what's your take on the orders? And do you like them? And like, how do you see this all kind of playing out in your lists? Yeah, I actually really like the uh, the 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 orders um, the orders in in this sort of uh, in this new sort of style. It, it feels kind of very sort of like OVR, where you have lots of like extra CPs, and you're like doing little small little buffs here and there to uh, to to get the units going. And of course, uh, these don't sort of count as a CP, so these are sort of like bonuses in addition to whatever you want to do. And they um, every every battle round, you then apply these buffs, so they can be very situational. They could be very, um, you know, um, key on the sort of uh, on the sort of timings and sort of where you place them. So I, th I think there's a sort of lovely sort of like mini game here during the 
during the games about where you put these in the right place, right time. Yeah, so I, I really like this sort of dynamic. So a couple of things you need to know if people haven't seen the Battle Tome or don't have it yet. A couple of things is they're issued from heroes. So the more heroes you have, the more orders you have. Uh, they are secret and there are different orders that get triggered in different phases. So some of them are in your turn, in different parts of the, the, the phase. Some of them actually even happen in your, in your opponent's turn. Um, they aren't commands, as um, Freddie has mentioned. So it's not going to count as you issuing or receiving a command for the purpose of command ability um what else what else they are secret as we've mentioned and there are some that are very unique to human elf or dwarden there are some generic ones as well uh the other call that i'd probably make here is that no more than three friendly heroes can have the same order at any time so you can't stack like all of the shooty ones and have like 10 shooting units you, you're really restricted to to three Anything else you'd want to add, or have I missed anything? No, no. I think, I think, I think the fact you can add it three times, uh, you know, three heroes can have the same. I think is 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 brilliant because I think there's certain ones, certain orders you'd want to, you know, utilize on say turn one. So you'd want to use it multiple times. So I think it's great that they've uh, allowed that. So you got two for the elves, two for the dwarven, three for the humans, and two that is generic to all of them. So talk to me a little bit about the way you look at orders. Um, what are you choosing? Uh, what are the units that you think the orders are good in? Like, like what's your what's your take, and how do you look at all this stuff? So, so with all these, I think I I just I don't take them as sort of a, a necessity. I take them more as sort of like a little extra little like buff sort of piece. So, I, I, how I always play is is basically without these orders, and then I use this to supplement what I'm trying to achieve. Um, so, you know, stuff like um, yeah, advanced in formation, the extra three inch move. Sort of that first sort of first turn, maybe just get be able to push out, make a bit more of a, a bit more space for yourself. Um, I think that could be used on basically any unit in the game. Mainly, I'd probably use it for the screens just to get um, get some sort of board presence. Um, the counter charge, I mean, plus one rend um, is just great on any on anything. So, um, especially I think most of the book is rend one. Uh, Ren one, Ren Ren zero. Except when you start doing charges, you start going up to Ren two. Um, so yeah, anything that improves Ren, especially where we've got a meta now where there seems to be quite a lot of uh, three up saves. I think I think that's a, a great place to be. And that one happens uh, at the in the enemy charge phase, which is a, fa a fascinating one. So it is, yeah. So that actually is if you're sat in your castle, um, yeah, you can then just activate it when you need to. You got the elf yeah. two. You got the two. You got the two elf. So who who are good recipients of counter charge? Like I, uh, is it your Drake spawns and your chariots? Is it something more like your troops, um, like your your corsairs or your black guard or things yeah, like like? Uh, no, I, I think. Well, I think I think any. I think that's a per kind of perfect thing with these sort of counter charge stuff. Is is actually perfect with any sort of unit. Um, if you just if you feel like there's going to hit a screen, blow it up, and then send come come, come through it like a stone horn maybe would. You can then counter charge um, and basically pin it again. Or you can then alternatively do a uh, different sort of style where you have chariots behind and then where you do the damage through and actually try and hit and, and actually try and clear the, the enemy unit. So I think there's just completely different ways of how you how, how the scenario sits up for yourself, that how you want to play it. Yeah, that one's very situational as well. So it's not like you yeah. can set it up that turn three you're going to do no. this counter charge and some. No, it's no. you got you got to be reading the game as it's kind of happening. Oh, by the way, it happens at the start of the battle round. So the same time you get your command points, the same time that you would uh, get your primal magic dice. So it's not in your turn or my turn. It is at the start of the battle round. No, yeah. So I think you just in that sort of scenario, you set up your castle, you set up uh, your screens, and then you 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 into you. Put the heroes in a position where you know that the probably the attacks are going to come from so yeah it's a great little protection against you what about the two elf ones so strike them down allows you to uh strike first if a, a elf unit makes a charge move yeah so again start at the charge phase so it's a lot easier to put the um the buff on um yeah you know, some of these ones where you can actually like charge away and actually Put yourself in a bad position, but this one you should put the the buff on first, strike first. You can never um, go wrong with a strike first, so it's uh, just allows you to basically hit two units at once. You know, start you know um, 
relaying that through. And of course, you could put this on three times. So if you had a heavy cavalry sort of build, um, you can basically strike first with with the majority of your army. Are you thinking Black Dragon? Um, yeah. or, or are you thinking all your Barriers. Drake spawn stuff? Like, are you thinking is that way yeah. kind of where you would lean into initially? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because you got the movement to get there. Um, so yeah, you could literally turn one, fire this one straight in with your black. Um, you can use even use assassins if you need to drop them in as well, or um, you know to, to make the sure this buffers get supplied. So yeah, I, I think it's a, a great sort of a little ability. What about the other side of the elves? The um, uh, what, they, what were they called? I can't remember the sorceress side where you had like your your dread your yeah. dread spears and your like are any of those particular units maybe you'd want to strike first? Um, yeah, I mean, it, I think any any time you can get damage in in first, I think is is a great place to be. I think these are sort of uh, sort of foot soldiers are always like your second wave or. Um, so yeah, I mean, if there's some units like that are like four up saves, sort of, you know, sort of these Charybdises and all that lot uh, are four up saves again. If you can fight first, uh, get that damage in, then and and then uh, do heals and all that sort of stuff, then that's a great place to be. Yeah, the uh, executioners with the um, two attacks each, they do mortals Mod on wounds. six. They do, yeah. they do two mortal wounds on a six. So um, that it's could be brutal. That yeah, that that, that could yeah. definitely be a strike them down type unit. Exactly. I'm just I'm just conscious of not talking always about order serpentis and people are like no, no, what about no, no, what about what about my dread spears? What about my uh, corsairs? Like I'm just I'm trying no, to be it's, mindful. Yeah, it's it, it's just uh, especially with like there's lots of layers with with cities. You just got to, you know. I think like the counter charge is perfect for the sort of bread spears, and that's I just think each you just pick and choose where where you want to fit because you'll have parts of your army that want to castle there's part of it that want to expand you just got to put these orders in the right place what about swift in disengage so the uh the unit can uh retreat so at the end yeah, of combat um, the unit can retreat what where do you use that like what uh, what are you thinking here the only way i can i can see this one being fully utilized is a, is a way to basically try and retreat onto objectives to try and steal um, steal stuff away. I haven't actually been able to use it fully uh, successfully in any of my practice games, um, but I'm sure there'll be one time where it comes up and it'll, it'll win me a game. So, yeah, th there is a time it will be useful. I guess the other area would be, again, going back to our Order Serpentis, if you could, let's say it's the bottom of the, that, the battle round, I then retreat them at the end of combat. Then I get those Drake spawn or that um, Dreadlord to then um, retreat, and I'm lucky enough to win the priority roll. And then I can charge again and get the boost on the yeah. attack profile. That, but obviously that's a risk because if I lose the prio, then the person just walks away from them or does whatever they <laughs> yeah. want to do. Right. So yeah. that's maybe an area. Yeah, it's trying to stop a pin. Yeah, but again. I think it's what three inches of the hero. So you basically be in your castle when you're it's, again, it's quite hard to sort of end a combat. You have to be within three uh, and you've got to be within three of the enemy. So I think there's uh, trying to keep your heroes alive in that sort of position might, might be a bit tricky, but let's, let's say, you know, it's uh battle round two. So let's say, sorry, actually let's say it's battle round three, right? So turn two, I charge my Drake spawn and my Dreadlord on black dragon. They're in combat. They're grinding it out. They haven't killed the unit. They're just grinding. Yeah. Um, we get to the next turn. They're still in combat. Um, I get given second. I'm like, cool. I'm going to swift disengage. And if I can't grind out the unit, cause it's a big block of idiots. Yep. Um, I know it's a long play and I'm kind of, it's, it's a, it's a big setup, but huh? that's maybe a way I'm seeing that could possibly use, no, but it's think, very think, situational. Yeah. I, I think, I think that there'll be, there will be certain situations where this will be, will game winning. So it just, it's just finding that, finding yourself in that position. I think you've said the most important one, which is going to be retreating off a combat and getting onto an objective and getting more bodies onto an objective. Like that, that'll be the, the, the key, the key winner on that one. Yeah, absolutely. What about the other two? What about the human side and the Duarden side? And I don't need to go into the detail like you are. Like, they're pretty self-explanatory. You go yeah. shield wall will give you a really durable unit. You can return fire and suppressive fire, which is going to be great for those Fusiliers. 
Do you think any of these are worth considering getting a human or a Dwarden unit into your list to take advantage of shield wall, return fire, engage foe, yada, yada, yada? Yeah, I think, I think, um, yeah, absolutely. I think, I, I, again, like what we'll go back to, I think you can sort of supplement your sort of elven army with, um, especially sort of like the, uh, the human side of things in terms of shooting. I think, you know, one hero and maybe a block of uh, fusiliers and, and these sort of orders, you can actually become pretty reliable with all your damage. And I, I think it will, it, will, it basically helps your army uh, quite, quite a great deal. So yeah, I, I definitely think about putting that sort of in, uh, in your builds. Yeah, I, look, for, suppressive fire or uh, return fire, very obvious. Uh, engage foe yep. um, could be a great way to use those cavalier type type mm -hmm. units. Um, if you're building yeah, into mean, a yeah. lot of, sh sorry, go on. No, no, no. Yeah, I mean, I mean, what plus one attack? I mean, you're looking at four attacks each with the cavaliers, rend two, damage two. Um, yeah, it, it, will, it will do a, a, a huge amount of damage. I don't mind the old Duarden uh, uh, shield wall either. Like getting them, no. obviously they strike last, but getting them a five up ward could just create a very durable unit. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I think they're all basically three up saves as well. So yeah, uh, three up, five up is incredibly difficult to get through. All right. So what I'm hearing is that this is a, a boost to your army. It's not a strategy you're going to build around as an elf player. It's an extra no. Um and obviously, you got to read the game and find situations where they're most valuable as opposed to set up like turn one, I'm going to do this, turn two, I'm going to do this, turn three, I'm going to do this, because it's a little bit harder to predict, especially on the elf side. It's exactly. I mean, this kind of plays in a way similar to like, sort of like Blades of Corn in terms of like the blood type. You're, you're, you're utilizing these at the right time in the right place. And um, again, these can completely change a game. If you get these in the right place, right time, that they will win you a game. Because some of these are actually incredibly powerful. Um, so yeah, I guess advance advancing the formation is probably the one that you can predict the most. Like turn one, yes. I'm going to get onto, yeah. I'm going to get to an objective. I want to get that plus three to move. I'm going to issue it three times so I can cap objectives. I can you know take on good board control, school yeah, those it's, battle it's, tactics. It's, 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 yeah, a lot of battle tactics now are movement related and uh, like sort of positional sort of um, charges. Not so much doing the damage, but actual charges and uh, and doing certain like activities around the board, like you know being within six of board edges or whatever. So any sort of extra movement is going to help towards that. Um, and then of course here you've got stuff here that can also help deny battle tactics, um, which which is a great um, great thing. Yeah, cool. Any anything else you'd mention on the orders? um no i think i think that's everything i feel like this is something that just comes with practice like you're just gonna have to practice yeah. it you're just gonna have to think about it don't rush yourself too much um and think about the game how it's unfolding as opposed to what you want to do automatically because um like counter charge sounds really great but if they charge me already that unit gets like i lose that particular order because i've been charged so it's it's gonna it's gonna really test your uh, ability to put heroes in the right place, right time, because it's yeah. all very much three inches. And yes, yes. So you're gonna find you're right. You're gonna be hugging your heroes with your units, and it's also gonna be very conscious when you you use a run roll. So if you use an uh an uh what's what's the what's the way you run six? I forget the name. Is it advance? Whatever. Stupid. Just yeah, yeah. move six. <laughs> just, <laughs> everyone knows the common name, but like. If you're going to do that on a unit, you're going to have to really have a really good idea how you keep that hero up um, or you're going to be outside of three and you can't issue the order and you're going to stuff yourself up. Absolutely. What about your command traits and your artifacts as an elf player? Who Who's your general and what are the command traits that stand out to you? Yeah, I mean, I, I think your general can be uh, any of the three main sort of sub-factions in terms of whether it's like the Corsair build, the Scourge Runner, um, the uh, the actual more Dark Hell sort of Sorcerer side, or or the Order Serpentis. So I think each one of them works well. Well, each one basically works for each one. So top one I use for the Fleet Master, um, which I think is a hilarious ability where everyone just does mortal wounds back to themselves if there any failed hits, uh, which is actually uh, quite huge in sort of certain situations. That's unparalleled um, duelist. Yes, unparalleled duelist. Yeah. So each attack, it, 
uh, that fails does a mortal wound. So you could yeet him into whatever you like, you know, um, zombies, and everything's going everything's going back the other way uh, in terms of mortals. Um, Secretive Warlock, great for the sorceresses. Add one to casting unbinds. I don't think you'll ever go wrong with that. Um, again, well, that when... opens up. Yeah. I was going to say, not so, when the sorceress, when she does a little stabby stabby um, and she's getting plus two to her cast, then a plus one from Secretive Warlock. That's plus three on a spell cast before yeah. you even add primal magic dice. Yeah, exactly. And then there's ways of increasing the range as well. So, yeah, it's, yeah, they become a very vital piece. Uh, and then the uh, Draconic Blood, Blood Pact, um, again, um, add one to attacks for all the weapons. Uh, yeah, great. Um, you know, if you want to make a even harder hitting black dragon, uh, which currently hits very hard, then even better. Would you put this on a sorceress on black dragon? And hopefully, your answer is no. No, I wouldn't. No, no. I, I'm so disappointed that a dragon yeah. can have a five up armor safe. Like I look at it and go, yeah, "Come on, hurts. man! Come on!" Yeah. Yeah, it hurts. So at least give him like a five up ward on the back of it or something. Yeah. Yeah, they kill it kills me a little bit on the inside. It's one of the first things I looked at. I'm like, oh, she's still uh Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so what I'm hearing is all three of them are good in their own way. If you had to pick one, like what's your number one pick out of the three? I mean, I always I prefer Unparalleled Duelist just because of the hero I'm putting it on opens up battle line options further down the line. Because I think the thing with elves is that you want to open up as many battle line options as you can. So uh, that's how I'd, I'd, I'd pick that one. In the current season, I'm picking Secretive Warlock. Getting that plus one to yeah. cast and plus one to unbind will make a big difference. It may save you from using a primal magic dice. It may get more of your spells off um, without the, yeah, the primal dice. Um getting the um, mystical dom dominance as well, the magical dominance as well early off, just that one extra plus one and uh, an unbind as well. Yeah, absolutely. What about your artifacts? I think, I think the, the clear favorite for me is the anklet. Um, add six to the range of spells cast by the bearer while it's wholly on train or contested objective, which on most of these battle plans now, there's you know more than three, four objectives. You know, there's quite a few with five or six. Very easy to be on an objective. Plus six to spells is is huge, uh, especially uh, with how damaging some of these spells are. So I think it's, it's, it's too good to not pass up on. Yeah, that's really good. That's really good. Um, yeah. What's what type of spells? I'm kind of ruining Christmas a little bit here, but like, what yeah. spells do you want to extend? Uh, I think the the main uh, I forgot the name of it is the is the pick a friendly unit within nine. Um, any attacks done by that unit it turns off save uh, no save. Oh the, yeah which yeah is, okay. Which is so you just you just put it. It gives you a lot more flexibility in where you could put that buff. It means you don't have to castle so tight around this sorcerer. You can actually uh, push out a bit more. So that that's how I'd be using it. Yeah, and you do find your cavalry get out of range pretty quickly of your wizard. So getting the extra six without having to pay for our spell portal or you know just having to run constantly yeah. to keep up that's um that's a good yeah, call. Yeah. What about the other two? What about the Venom Fang and the Shadow Shroud Ring? Um, I don't mind the Venom Blade. Um, yeah. The other, I um, mean, that used. To, yeah, I mean, the Venom Fang used to always be famous. It was it on in Anvil Guard on on the assassin sort of thing where you had six attacks and you know you just fish for sixes on the wound. Um, yeah, I mean, if there's, I don't know now how many uh, Elven heroes have a lot of attacks, but yeah, I mean, these more any mortal wounds is always is always good to have. And then the Shroud Ring can't see, not visible with twelve away, and that that just says not visible. So a lot of spells as well can't be visible so actually in certain situations that's uh that's it that can be uh absolutely brilliant so a lot of quite heavy damaging spells need visibility i think blizzard does so if you don't have to get your uh, main wizard blown off uh turn one then happy days i've been using a uh fungoid cave shaman in my gloom spike gits which is my general and it has a rule exactly like this just on the war scroll and i've been you know using spell casting savant as my grand strategy being able to avoid being picked uh, has kept my wizard around 
more times than it's died. So if you're being smart with it and you know, you're not trying to get too close, it's an easy way to keep your wizard from being targeted because they just can't see it. Obviously area of effect damage is still going to hit it, but for being targeted for Seraphon or any particular spell, it's, um, it's, a, it's not Never a bad did. one, but would I choose my artifact choice for it? I don't, I don't know. It's not beating the anklet. Yeah. The anklet is hot. The anklet is hot. The plus six <laughs> inches is hot. All right. So next up, we have our Dwarden. And uh, I just had a small little Wi Fi crash. So if you saw a glitch there, apologies. You're not going crazy. But we just talked about the elves. What about the Duarden? Do you have a particular favorite uh, Duarden? You know, obviously you're not going to put a general as your um, in your particular area as a dwarf. But is there one that stands out to you? And more importantly, would you take a Duarden artifact? Maybe if you were building a little side piece in your army. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Duarden trait wise, I, I love priests. I think, I think any 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 more priests you can get, I think, uh, is is a sort of a a, a great thing to have um artifact wise um what we got here uh like the book of grudges say. the book yeah. of grudges book is book okay book. if you're if you're going to yeah. invest into other units yeah exactly and then i, I mean strike last again is always um it's always useful having having a way on a four up to have a strike last um yeah, I mean, you could literally just sit him in in your army, and then and it's just another way of of getting the damage out um, first. Especially when you can then pair this with uh, counter charging and and that sort of stuff. You can actually then do, uh, cause a lot of damage prior to uh, receiving any. I think for me with the Duarden uh, combinations is there's no sole artifact that I could just pick on one one person or one unit and that's it. There's going to be uh, an investment of at least a hero and a troop. So if you're looking for that one little holy grail, probably not. If you were already going to build in some iron drakes or some hammerers or something else like long beards, cool. Grab, grab a warden king and some long beards and get yourself the pile driver gauntlets. But Otherwise, for me, I'm like, uh, no, I'd rather put them somewhere else. Yeah. What about the humans? Is there any particular human? Now, I think there's some really good choices here. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, from artifact point of view, I've I've always liked the wizard ones. Um, so uh, you take D3, more, uh, roll D3, uh, subtract the amount of roll, casting rolls made for enemy wizards. I, for those sort of key sort of uh when someone does um what's it called magical dominance being able to shut down um shut down their sort of uh magical dominance i've I've always enjoyed that um four up spelling um four up models don't flee great it's three inches um to all melee uh all missile weapons brilliant again these aren't really uh related to uh, uh elves but I, I think they are very good. And then the Sigma, uh, Sigma right war weapon, Warhammer, sorry. Uh, rend and damage, especially when you put that on a griffin, um, it, it, yeah, that'll do some uh, some sort of crazy output. So, yeah, mm. I, I like a lot of them out, um, artifacts. I'm glad you said that because if I was running a mostly elven build, you could still see like a free guild general on griffin, yeah. give her it the Sigma right Warhammer, and it's its own independent piece that is... Yeah. Either even if you're building, you know, like a non Drake spawny type area, you've still got this this threat. And um, with the Warhammer, it's it's quite a good statistic profile. So, um, good little yeah, independent threat piece. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't need anyone else. Uh, Any... Apart from that, uh, I mean, again, priests can't go wrong with a priest. Um, there's a a good sub faction where. Priests, I think, get one of the best um, prayers in the game. So, um, any more chances to do that, I think, is great. Um, and then, yeah, apart from that, uh, add one to wound rolls for shooting. Yeah, great. Again, not so much the Elven build. No, if you if you're going to build into the Fusiliers and you wanted a whole bunch of shooting, yeah, go the the Macroscope, go Master of Ballistics. But in an Elf style build, you're probably keeping your General as an Elf and Look, maybe you do get the uh, the the macroscope to 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 support your twenty fusiliers, but um, you don't want to overinvest too much. 
spells. Now, I think the spell law for humans, and we'll the, obviously the elves are coming in a second, but I think at minimum you are taking at least one battle mage or something from the human side because there are some good spells here that I would probably want. And the wizard's independent. Right, exactly. I mean, uh, all my lists I've done are, are solely um, elves, but I I was, in the majority of them, I did have a battle mage in there originally. I think when you look, I don't think you'd be able to look past Pal of Doom, turning off command abilities, it um, can't issue or receive, is just absolutely huge, um, especially when people overextend out of their, out of their sort of protection bubbles. Um, it's, it's just really nice. Um, and then just outside of that, I, I really like the um, transformation of lead, uh, equal to number um, number of models in that unit roll of dice that exceeds that unit save characteristics. So those sort of units that are, you know, to, for example, you know, blood warriors when they're in your face at two, on two up saves, you know, take 15, 20 mortals back. You know, it's it's a it's a huge sort of way of getting through that heavy um, heavy save sort of build um, that that some people are using right now. You know, stuff like Slaves of Darkness, Knights, that sort of stuff. Um, and then, of course, the other human stuff. So, Fars, uh, Protection, uh, I mean, Ignoring Rend, um, Massive, especially on all the 3-up save uh, stuff. So, all your Cavaliers, 3-up uh, save, Unrendable, is, is absolutely brilliant. Um, yeah, I think there's some absolutely brilliant spells in here. Um, just wish that the, it was uh, all cities of Sigma, not just humans. And that's why these videos are split to human elf yeah. Duarte, because there's some really good stuff in there, but they don't cross over very well. No. Um, how cool would it be to put fierce protection onto the Dreadlord or a reinforced unit of um, Drakespawn knights, you know? Yeah. ignoring ignoring rend but you, unfortunately you can't but in the last chat we we're talking like your steam tank your steam tank commander for example oh, yeah. has a two, two up, plus yeah. save unrendable two plus save that is going to grind some people's gears <laughs> yeah but if you, I, I, I can't deny i have been looking at it if you're having problems with, you know, um, being durable if you are having problems you just want to tie someone up while you do a bunch of things it's not a bad little power pair getting a battle mage plus a steam tank commander, and then the rest of it can be your elves. If you want. And obviously wild forms are changed as well. There's some other there's some other cool rules, but I think, yeah, I think you've called that yeah. the good ones at least. Uh, unless obviously you're dealing with um you, you're struggling with output and you need some mortal wounds, things like fireball can be a helpful one as well. Absolutely. And at least that doesn't that doesn't require synergy as well. It's just straight up mortal nope. wounds. But here's the good stuff. Here's the stuff that you want to talk about. So the elves have three spells, Sap Strength, Umbral Hex, and Ternabral Blades. Yeah, I mean, I mean the 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 big bad on, on there is that ten temporal blades, arguably probably the best spell in the game uh, at the minute. It's um you just pick an elven unit uh within range, uh, and then until the start of your next hero phase, any attacks that they do, uh, you don't have a save. So um absolutely massive um especially when you apply those units to yourself so you um you get around um you get around people's spell um, spell ignores and that sort of stuff um you can apply the buffs safely out of 30 if you want to and then send uh, send that into the, into the um into the battle so yeah phenomenal so why like like connect the dots for me here like if i'm if i'm somebody looking at this going okay well it's range nine that's a very short range i'm going i can turn it to no save so what like what makes this such a good spell in your eyes okay so i mean there's a a lot of a lot of armies have their sort of anchors um you know sort of like yeah the mortis guard you know the mega gargants that sort of stuff now if you can what made the old cities book very powerful and, and, and this one now is if you can apply buffs safely out of range and then and then apply those buffs into the battle, um, it's a lot more reliable than say having to be in the battle and, and trying to fight people's dice, domination dice, uh, primal dice and that sort of stuff. So, you know, you pair this with say Mist Haven, where I can then do hero phase movement and then normal movement 
I can now have you know 20, 20 to twenty five uh, inch threat ranges while out while still being out of a uh, out of um, unbind range because I'm now doing spells from fifteen away with the six inches and that sort of stuff. So all that paired into each other means that this buff can't be stopped, and also I can now apply it to anywhere I need to on the battlefield. Um, and and basically, I can just take out the anchor without any sort of threat to myself. So you can really get through that. Uh, you can cut because you mentioned earlier in our chat, this book doesn't have a lot of natural rend, like rend one, no. some rend two, but it's mostly rend one or rend nothing. Yeah. But what you do have is often a volume of attacks, a lot of attacks. Yes. So by cutting down the save characteristic, you can ignore Mystic Shield or at defense. You can ignore Finest Hour, and you could just use pure volume to get through the person's um, armor save. And just that weight of dice, there'll be a lot of failed ones, there'll be a lot of failed twos that will likely either bring down the monster, take down that elite unit, and um, get bang for your buck. That's absolutely. And then obviously the um, the command trait to give you uh, plus six to the range makes it 15. Um, would you go something like Armbrel Spell Portal to extend that range throughout the game? Well, no, because I mean, these are to your own units. So what I would be doing is is, is basically fighting in layers. So I'd, I'd buff a unit up, send it out to go fight. And then the next turn, the next unit will be buffed up to be sent out. Um, so that's how I would, it, mine's more, I build lists in, in layers. So you have to fight one buffed unit at a time and you have to deal with it. Um, and yeah, so that's just how I how I would utilize these these blades. Again, you can then pair that with sap strength, give them minus one wound as well while you're at it. And that's also, you've got a problem unit that you can't deal with. You're getting probably minuses to wound, minuses to hit from what your battle mages or whatever. Um, yeah, and, and then you basically just, you can't deal with it. Do you like the other two? Like I know you just mentioned sap strength, yeah. but what about what about yeah, Umble Hex? Yeah, I, I mean, especially in a time where you can um I think you paired this lovely with um with the Charybdis. So if you're able to turn off inspiring presence or other ways of doing it, so um then being able to make them roll two D six is is absolutely massive against some armies which you know, like a Stormcast protectors or something like that, you know, something that wants to stay around for longer but only has a small bravery, you want to be inspiring presencing it all the time. If you now lose two D six, um yeah, we haven't got a unit anymore. Yeah, like I, I, I would be scared as a squeak player if you do that to my squeak herd and they've got yeah. like bravery they're bravery three and I'm rolling two D six. Yeah. Uh, and I can't inspiring presence them anyway. That is horrific. Yeah, great, great little spell. It's uh, again, it's it's within twelve, so you need the extra plus six to just make it utilize it. Uh, again, you though you could use this with portal. Mm. So this one yeah. maybe one where you actually put portal on it. Yeah, to reach out. That's it's a good. It's a, yeah. I, I think all three of them are good in their own way. The minus one yeah. to wound. You you can't stress how valuable minus one to wound is because there's so few buffs to to get plus one to wound. And yeah, all three good spells. What what's your what's your order? Like what's the the number one, the number two, then the number three? It's pick? My, mine's mine's blades hex sap. That's that's how I'd I'd I'd, I'd, I'd set it up with with my sorceresses. Would you go Geminids and Charybdis or one of the other to improve? Well, maybe not Geminids because Geminids doesn't impact your battle shock, but would you go Charybdis? Um, even play for the Triumph. Like you could play for the Triumph oh, yeah. and stop the opponent getting um, inspired. No, no. What's the other? What, yeah, what is the... But your Bloodthirst, you're Indomitable. Yeah. Indomitable. I yeah. which one it is. Yeah. yeah. I, think, I think it's. Yeah, I think now, I think I've seen far less people try and fight for the Triumph. I mean, you, back when Gits were kind of like the problem child, you'd see a lot of lists around 1910, 1920 and all that. I think now if you get to around 1950, you're probably getting that Triumph. So, um, yeah, I mean, if you had that and built into this, uh, I think you could cause a lot of problems for certain armies. You know, like the zombies don't want to be taken, uh, when they lose 20, they don't want to be taking another 2d6 on battle shocks and, and that sort of stuff, so... Yeah, helps you cut through the uh, the bravery tens as well. Even like corn or any other like yeah. you know chaos or chaos or death. Yeah, it gets, it gets through. Way. Yeah. 
What about your priest? Would you take any? Uh, would you take a Duarden priest just to get any of these? My general feel is no. General feel no, but I think I would look at taking a priest, a Duarden priest in a certain sub faction, not okay. not for the one of these prayers, but the other one. Obviously, if I'm taking Iron Drakes, I would take you know Rune of Unfaulted Aim. If I'm taking some Hammerers, if I'm taking like you know something else, obviously that makes sense. But what I'm saying is, I wouldn't take a a priest just for this prayer alone. Like the Battle Mage, I would take a Battle Mage on its own to get a, a spell. I would not do that for the Duarden Priests. Yeah, agree. Cool. Let's talk these sub factions. So. Um, there are 11 sub factions, and here's your first six. So, Hammerhall Aksha, uh, Hammerhall Gairan, or Gaira, uh, Living City, Tempest Eye, Hallow Heart, Grey Water. We'll go to the other ones um, after this. But from your yeah. side of the fence as an Elfie, um, what works well? Which ones do you like, and yeah. what stands out? So, for me, I, I, I quite like there, There's three on there that I, I quite like. Um, so, Grey Water Fastness. I mean, anytime you can do uh, three all out uh, attacks, uh, shooting wise, especially when you've got Scourge Runner Chariots um, running around, um, which are now actually very reliable shooting. Got Drake's um, Dark Shards, that sort of stuff. So, um, there's um, and then there's Corsair shooting as well. So there's plenty of shooting built into the Elven list that I think can uh, have quite a serious output with the uh, Grey Water Fastness. Uh, Living City, I think, will always be good. Any way of having that sort of board presence, board wide, being able to ambush on. Um, I, th I believe most of these units still had their plus one to run and charge built in on the banners, I believe, or the, or the horns or what it used to be. So, um, yeah, it's a great way of, again, just putting the damage where you need them. Um, and the last one I like is Hammerhall Ashqua. Um, so again, two orders instead of one. So this is where you can then have like the retreat one built in with another order, so that when you do do that, say the counter charge, and then you can retreat away. Or there are basically multiple ways of. Um, this is, I think, the way you would utilize the sort of fade away stuff and the um, other buffs in, in the orders. You could basically start stacking and that's probably where the the free guild leader comes in talia where you can have an extra one as well so, like, so yeah so i think there's definitely some play there i was just rereading the black arc fleet master and realizing that its um ability for all that attack is for shooting and combat it's not restricted to melee right. only which means the black arc corsairs if you issue them the all out attack uh is doing three attacks on the repeater hand hand bow um fours fours no rend one damage so if you pair that up with the the no oh no, no the no save is a melee only one but either no. way like issuing yeah, all that attack three, three. yeah what about what about hello heart with like a sorceress build do you see do you see some play there or do you think that's more like I, your, I, your hurricanums I, I, and stuff i i feel um dark dark elves unfortunately don't have the um like a hill spell built into their one so if i'm taking d3 or at risk of d3 uh mortal wounds um I'd, i'm a bit more nervous about that because when i can roll three dice and do 10 more uh, d3 mortals to myself every time plus i'm doing cuts you know um with the sorceress uh, i'd rather not be at risk of, of, of killing myself uh, in an early turn it is an unmodified roll, though, so it, your cuts and and that won't be affecting. So, but yeah, I, I, nice I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I still echo your concern that I don't want the D three mortal wounds um, to go to the sorceress. I know in the free guild chat um, with Bart, we were talking about the healing mechanics that the free guild corp will give, which is great. Yes, but that that doesn't help you. No, no, it, no. So Hallow Heart might be a risk too great for a Elven Sorcerer build. Yeah, I, I think so. And it's a shame because that used to be my favourite um, sub-faction from the old book. What about Living City? I know you're a, uh, a movement person, and we will go to Mist Harvard in a second. Yep. But do you see play with the Living City and what you'd want to do? Yeah, absolutely. I mean... Um... Again, like we said, um, a lot of the battle tactics are related to movement, objectives, positional um, now. So if you're able to put those sort of pieces um, 
anywhere on the board um it, it massive it creates a uh, it's a massive boost basically to to being able to score your battle tactics so uh, i think it's a, a really good um really good sub faction yeah because i imagine something like this where you could have you know your whether it's your jet spears your chariots whether it's whatever it is like you could put them on the yeah. board and you could have courses on the side you could have dark riders on the side you could have even your dragon coming in from the side if you want to um set up that nine inch charge there's there are some good things with living city but i imagine uh you're going to tell me that miss tarvin is just so much better yeah I, th I think this is the best uh in my opinion the best uh sub faction um while you only have to while you do have to be outside of 12 um every unit can make a d6 move um and the mounts can make 2d6 uh, and you can finish within three inches so basically you um you know on average these knights now are now going 17 um which you know is absolutely uh, monstrous it's very hard to um you know defend against someone where you kind of like squigs where you don't know actually know how far they're going how short they're going you know and it's very hard to defend against it you know so in theory these the um great spawn knights go 22 inches with sorry how so oh because they're mounted Shoot. right yeah, I'm going. I'm going. How did you, I'm like? How did you get seven from D six? Like I'm like in my head. No. I'm doing all the maths. No. I'm like, oh wait, no, they're mounted. No, two D six. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I mean, even D six. So you, you, you know, you, uh, having like a three or a four extra movement. Now these are, you know, ten inch moving corsairs, ten inch moving sorcerers. It's 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 a it's a huge um, it's a huge bit of uh, extra bit of movement, and that's end of every hero of your hero phase. Sorry so three yeah. different units sorry so it, I, I think it's great the the fact that you can finish a move within three inches of an enemy is that that to me is the most powerful piece because yeah the movement's great but stopping an unleash hell being able to um stop a redeploy there's so many things here that is just beautiful yeah yeah exactly yeah it's uh and again because it's more outside of twelve people don't really clock it as much, mm. um. But yeah, I, I really like that. Yeah, that's good. I like that. What about the others? What about like Lethus, Excelsius, Settlers Gain? Would Settlers Gain be good for your sorcerer build, sorceress build? Yes, I, I think that's if you are going to go more magic build, I think you go Settlers Gain. Um, I think there's plenty of good Lumineth heroes you could put in. Um, you know, like the. Who's what's the twins called? We get the extra CP. Um, uh, Ele Eleanor and yeah. yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. So that sort of stuff where they're designed based to be allied in. So again, you can get extra cast there, extra CP, plus you get an extra CP from them. I, I could see that being a, a good build. I, I also really like um, Lethis basically because I think it has again one of the best prayers in the game, it just turns so off ward saves. So, sorry, gone. No, no, I was just going to read it out. So it's the answer value of four, range of 12, uh, pick an enemy unit, and uh, wards cannot be made by that enemy unit. So why, connect the dots for me, why is this a powerful prayer? So so basically, most most abilities where you see like this, where they turn off wards, are mainly spells. Now, a lot of armies nowadays have a lot of spell ignores and that sort of stuff. This will just completely bypass that. So four up, you can just turn off people's saves. You're seeing a lot of five up save, um, more ward saves now. Four up ward saves. So being able to ability just to shut that down um, is absolutely massive, um, and it can't be stopped by the opponent. Um, so I think it's a, it's a great ability because it, because it's a prayer. So you can't counter yeah. a prayer. There are no ways to get pluses to the prayer. That's a shame. Yeah. So it's uh, not like the. Unless, yeah. I, yeah. I was literally I about to. I was literally about to bring up the Warden King, not the Warden King, the Rune Lord, to see if it got a natural. Can. Stormcast, Lord Relictor gets plus one. He gets plus one. Yep. Yep. Um, I was having this, I was having this conversation with Bart. I can't think of a good priest in Stormcast. Yes, you can do the Lord Relictor, but that's 145 points. And outside of this particular prayer, I don't know how much value the Lord Relictor brings to the party. I, I don't know if you have any thoughts around who else could benefit, or maybe you do think 145 for the Lord Relictor is worth it purely for this prayer alone. No, yeah, no, you're probably not. Yeah, you're probably right. I think what you'd look at is sub, you know, making people into priests. So whether that be the Free Guild General or 
or the Dward in making an extra prayer. I'd, I'd have to do it that way and have a cheaper alternative um, than than probably a Stormcast. Yeah, like I know, like when because I run Stormcast and when I don't use Translocate, and obviously having High Priest as well gives me the plus one, so I'm bringing that down to a two. Yeah. Um, or I can re-roll. I can't remember what the rule is. There. But anyway, like, it, like the consistency is super high on that Lord of Relictor. When it's outside of Stormcast, without the High Priest command trait, without Translocate the prayer, I yeah. just don't know. I personally don't know value is. Yeah. If, if that's valuable enough for me. No, I get that completely. Uh, um, yeah, I, don't, I can't say I've ever used a, a Stormcast Priest ever in cities before, so probably not enough now to, to start using one. But who knows if the book gets updated in the future, obviously that changes. And the Rune Lord doesn't get a plus one at all. So uh, you, you, you're you purely 50-50 on this uh, four, up, yeah. four up prayer. Yeah, but, but to be honest, for, for how game-changing it is, I'd, I'd take, it's that sort of thing like Curse. If you get Curse off, it, it can absolutely shred someone. So again, it's that sort of same sort of, uh, you know, it's a nice to have, but you, you probably don't try and force it, if that makes sense. Yeah, and if, because it's a short range and it's 50-50, it means like you need to get it yeah. off. And if you don't get it off, um, like you, you're not going to get many opportunities. Excelsius is obviously really good for your free guild. Your Vindicarum is really good for your, your flagellants. Uh, your Settlers game we've already talked about. I, I assume yeah. what I just said means that they're not really good for elves. Like you wouldn't take an elf build in Vindicarum. Um, Excelsius, no. not really, not for an elf. Not to say they're not good. It's just that they're not beneficial to elves. No, uh, I mean, the only thing you got Excelsius is it does um, plus one wound characters to monsters. So Hydras and Charybdis and Black Dragons and that sort of stuff. Um, and also I, I do like the uh, Free Guild Cavalier build. So I think, again, if you have it like this, I think they basically turn into um, evocators sort of blowing up, um, doing those sort of roles. So I think you could build that within a... Uh, basically have one uh, Cavalier Jet Marshal, maybe a block of 10 of them, and then have a basically an Elven list behind it. And I think that would still work uh, pretty nice. Yeah, if I was doing Excelsius, and this is where that 60-40 kind of works, I would absolutely get the Free Guild Marshal on horse. I would then get a block of, say, 5 to 10 of these Cavaliers. Um, they've got some really good power pair shenanigans with them as well. And you're right, it then turns the Dreadlord on Black Dragon to be 15 wounds. The War, the War Hydra turns to 13. That's healing five every combat phase. Um, I assume the, Charyb the Charybdis is the same. It's now 13 wounds, shutting off Inspiring Presence within 12. Like And, and Rally, and Rally. Oh, that's good. That's real good. Yeah, uh, it's good, yeah. It's not a, uh, some, some good tech in here. Some yeah, yeah there, is, here. there is. You just, you just got to dive into it, yeah. I've uh fun fun fact um I've got this uh, I've got this War Hydra Charybdis I bought from um a third party company I, was, I think it was Creature Caster that's Australian so it's got like a head of a kangaroo head of a koala it's been sitting in a resin box for a while maybe now it's time to bring out my Australian War Hydra oh no I've, I mean I've got I've got a War Hydra and a Charybdis painted up fully um I was always trying at some point to be brave enough to take you to a, a tournament. But I think now, actually, uh, there, there is some uh, validity to actually uh, bringing one uh, competitively. And, and your OG, you've always had it. You've always been a fan yeah, of I've the Charybdis. And... <laughs> yeah, that's how it should be. These these grand strategies, I feel like I know the answer, but you've got four choices. Uh, I'm just going to write off the first one. The fact that you've got to score four grand four battle tactics from this book. I hate those and it just restricts you. So right now I'm going to assume that doesn't exist. Yeah. yeah do you agree? Difficult. Difficult. Yeah. Anything that pencils you into forcing you down the battle tactic route. Um, yeah. I'm not. Yeah. It's not, not viable competitively. Do you think the other three are viable, or is there one that stands out from the pack more than others? I think the one that that stands out there is the is the uh, banners held high. I think, um, I mean, basically, your entire army has banners, um, and a lot, of, quite a few of the heroes actually have totem keywords. So all you got to do is be higher than uh, is have the total higher. And there's quite a few armies that don't have any totems at all, or any um, or any standard bearers. So there are ways of forcing it through and i think a lot of the grand strats at the minute are quite difficult so this is one where you can actually play around and uh to to make sure you get it 
Yeah, I, I think that's a good one. Like if you're building multiple units and you can keep them around, uh, I think banners held high is a very good one. The other two, I think, are situational. Like I don't mind reclaim for Sigma. I don't mind hold the higher ground. But I think for me, the banners held high is the clear favorite of the three. Yeah, I think I think any any sort of battle tactic that forces you to be somewhere by turn five is always a difficult one to play because it means that sometimes you have to walk away from objectives or whatever. You have to play a different game turn five than what you would normally want to do. Um, so it's a fine if you tabled someone, but if you haven't, you're having to give up potentially other stuff to, to make this grand strategy happen. So I normally try and stay away from that sort of stuff. And you don't have really any teleports. Like it's not like you have a hand of Gork where you can go, cool, turn five, I need this in this quarter, pick it up, move it. You're relying on your movement. Um, and that can that can be tough. Yeah. I'm just going through the heroes trying to look for any who who has the totem keyword. I'm I'm actually really curious on I know the free guild Artifact command doesn't. Yeah. No, no. I, I looked at that. No, the the um the the Pope doesn't have. No, even yeah, the Pope doesn't. But the, even the command doesn't have totem, but it does have a banner. So I believe. So anyway, yeah. what about what about the look? I'm just gonna I'm gonna acknowledge it. I know the answer already. I'm just gonna say it. Battalion hot garbage to you. <laughs> yeah, I'm afraid so. Yeah. Yeah. And why? Why is it hot garbage? If any, if anyone doesn't know. Uh, there's there's just not much in there that you'd want to actually take. Um, so the Fusilier Major on, on Ogre, the, the Great Cannon, um, and then you've got to take three units of Fusiliers or, or, or Steam Helms. I think oh, it yeah. just forces you down a path that doesn't provide you enough bonuses to, to warrant that sort of change. Yeah, in the in the human discussion, um, we struggled even to justify it as a free guild player. Uh, in an elf player, I think no, you're not taking it. You're going, you know, warlord, command entourage, battle regiment, uh, uh, at the acolyte battalion. Right now, in the yeah. current general's handbook, you're not taking yeah, absolutely. it. Absolutely. What about your battle tactics? You've got one specific to your elves, which is strike without warning. You've got one that's Duarden, and then you've got three three that are generic and one that's free guild command corp yeah i think i think i think there's a really nice ones in here I, I like the fact that they've uh made it so that each each uh faction uh each side of it gets their own sort of uh battle tactic i think the elven one is probably the, the, the easiest of them three charges when you pair that with say mist haven when you can do the dc uh 2d6 movement so they can't redeploy away from that and then you can utilize that to charge um you're 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 massively increasing your chances of, of of getting the charges in again it just says about making a charge move doesn't need to stay there don't need to you know you can if you want to you can charge it in and then try and retreat them out like what we said with the retreat um play mm. um what else we got we got suppressing fire order um so that one needs to be free guild i believe suppressing fire was the order for free guild so that one yeah 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 can't. it's a free guild one yeah <laughs> Yeah, uh, and then yeah, complete this tactic. Three or more units are destroyed in the shooting phase. That's doable in certain elven shooting lists, like the one I'll, I'll show you in a bit. So that is certainly possible. Um, yeah, and then I think the only other one was mount the charge. So you control the objective at the end of turn, and every friendly unit possesses it as a mount. So there are certain situations, especially when there's a lot of um, six um, objective battle plans now on five. That you can just get sort of like a demigriff, um, not demigriffs anymore, Drake's Born Knight charge in, kill the unit that's holding it and just sit on it. So that's definitely a doable one. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. I, th I think there's a couple of really good ones. You might choose a unit of Fusiliers if you want to get Suppressing Fire. Um, I think it's a risky play. You probably, as an elf person, don't want to take the Free Guild Command Corp because there's real, really no benefit unless you're building more Free Guilds. Um, the Black Powder Bombardment's an interesting one. I'll be curious to see more about from you because you've got to kill three units. That's a lot. That's a yeah. lot of damage you need to do. I, um, I think, yeah, I think it's I think it's very situational. If you find yourself that you've got an opponent with lots of two wounds left on stuff and three wounds, then you may activate it. Um, you you won't go for some full uh, strength stuff, but if it, if it arises and you see a lot of wounded stuff, you you can go for it. 
I was talking to Bart about the turn one battle tactics, which is a very tough one for a lot of people, especially like you do magical dominance or maybe uh, what's the one where you got to be outside your, more units outside your territory uh, invaders. invade. Yes. Invaders. And like outside of that, there's some really not a lot of turn one options, but for no. you and specifically Miss Tarvin strike with that warning actually could be a turn one, one. Doable. If you go, if you go second in the first battle round. Yeah, it's especially and and to be honest, even your certain battle plans. If you're there's quite a few that you're only twenty two apart. True. So twenty two apart, or like risk without ward, you can be on the battle line, so you can basically be ten inches away. So there are definitely options of of basically alphaing, especially in Miss Haven. You can easily alpha most of your army turn one. Yeah, and then the bled, the Dreadlord on Black Dragon lets you re-roll charges for your That's... so order Serpentis. So then. Like there's yeah. just so much ability, Mist Harvin, Drake Spawn stuff. Yeah, it's, it's hard to uh, yeah, you're hard to keep track of, of where everything's going because it'll be moving so quick. But it is it is possible. Like doesn't mean it's a good idea, but <laughs> it is po it is possible uh, yeah. if you don't want to risk it for the biscuit with you know uh, magical dominance. Yeah, exactly. It just opens right. up more doors. I think we're both feeling there's good amount of battle tactics for you, even though some of them are shut off because uh, they're not Elven. Any, yeah, I anything? Mean, I mean, no, I mean, all I'd say on that is I think currently with the battle tactics, I think you only probably need to subsidize maybe one or two battle tactics from what the general's handbook is at the minute. I think there's quite a few good ones in there. So if you can get one or two from your own book, you're in a much stronger place than some of the, of the other armies. Yeah. Like magical dominance, uh, you know, set, uh, the, the bait, yeah, bait, bait, and, bait, and, bait and switch. Um, it's Surround invaders. And destroy. Surround yeah. destroyed. There's, there's at least like four or five really good ones. And, you know, strike without warning could then lead you into bait and switch. And then it could lead you into like three units on the different sides of the board. There's there's some nice little flow on combinations exactly. to, to score your BTs. Hmm. Yeah. I dig it. Very nice. Let's talk your list. Let's actually get this theory into practice. So uh, this is list number one, and uh, Freddie is so flexible, like a gymnast. You could take this list as a grey water fastness or a mist Harvin list. That's how flexible this yeah. is. So yeah, I'm choice. I think you can take it even even, in even more. Um... Um, sub factions, but yeah, I mean, dark, all right, settle, dark, settle down, yeah. humble, fle humble yeah. flex, humble flex. Let me yeah. read out the rules and then I want you to unpack yeah. it for me. So, you yeah, no, have uh, Banners Held High is your grand strat, Indomitable, it's a 1990 list. Um, so you got 10 points maybe for the triumph, maybe. Uh, you got a Black Arc Fleet Master, which is a general with unparalleled duelist. You have three sorceress. One is Turnabral Blades with the Anklet of Epiphany. You have a sorceress with Turnabral Blades, and then you have a sorceress with Hoarfrost. You have two units of double reinforced, so 30 Blackguard Corsairs, a unit of 30 Blackguard. You have Drake Spawn Knights, Drake Spawn Knights, three Scourge Runner Chariots, three Scourge Runner Chariots, and the good old boy Charybdis. Uh, in as we mentioned, Grey Water or Miss Tarvin or whatever you want, and you've done a battle yeah. regiment and Entorian acolytes as well. Yeah, I think I think this is an example. I think previously old uh, Caesar Sigma, you couldn't do a balanced army very well. You normally had to be skewed in one way or another to to be fully utilized. But I think say this sort of build is is the most balanced. Um, I think you can get uh, the new books, and I, I think it actually works in all phases, which is um, a really nice change. Um, so, I mean, you got three sorceries in and Andalur and Acolyte, so you're going to be pumping off a lot of spells, you know, plus two uh, the majority of the time, plus all the and, uh, extra dice. So uh, a lot of these spells are going to be hard to stop. Um, you got, uh, there's just 10 Black Guard. Because that's all you need now to give them all the four up wards. So there's no rule that says you can't have them all by the ten guard. Oh, did, so, is that a mistake there? That's that's, that's, that's yeah, a ten. Not no, that's not yeah. thirty. Like like people yeah. people are going to at me. They're like, how has he got over his reinforcement <laughs> points? Why why is thirty yeah. black guard only? It's ten, folks. It's ten. Yeah, so. it's, it's ten. Yeah. 
So again, so they're they're going to be on a four up save. They're going to be like your um, sort of holding force. So then with the sorceresses, and then you've got two big blocks of uh, dark corsairs. Now you could run these anyway, whether you do them shooting builds or combat builds. Um, they are just absolute mince uh, mincers. So these are the ones you want to put the the blades on. Put the fleet master right in the middle of it, uh, and and basically have a cribless in among those two big blocks. So if you go near them, you're going to get shredded, and then you're going to then start suffering battle shock losses. Uh, and then the knights and the chariots are there basically for harassment. Scourge run chariots do a lot of damage at range. Uh, Eighteen inch shots. You can then do your two d six, um, you know, um, movement, or you can do the great water fastest. All everyone's doing all that attack. Um, three chariots will will cause quite a, quite a bit of damage. Uh, uh, cause a lot of hassle. And then the knights, you can use them however you want. Whether you want to screen out with them because um, they are three up, save ten wounds, very hard, a very good uh, screen. Or you can alpha them and do pinning works. Because um, again, you can easily buff them up. Um, you know, there's three wizards there to do mystic shields, ten um, blades, whatever you want, and then send them in. So it, it I think it fights in all phases. Um, incredibly sort of um, good castle, um, but then it also has the range and, and the threat to go elsewhere. Uh, th there was an interesting change to the Scourge Runner Chariot. I don't know if I like it or if I don't like it, which is um, if the Harpoon... So the, the old rule used to be if the Harpoon hit with an unmodified 6, it was D3 Mortal Wounds. Instead, it's now if you damage a monster with the Harpoon, it is um, three... three... 3 damage, yeah. Yeah, it's 3 damage if it targets... Um, targets a monster it's ren 2 though so it's not the mortals um yeah. it's just yeah it's just all it is it's just it's just causing um your opponent to have to deal with it so um you know these are fast moving 12 move um yeah they're they're going to be cut so that's what 30 inch threat range turn one you know if you if you want to put techless you know in, in her bubble you know, you got to be um, concerned about getting peppered um, every turn, so it's just it just forces people to come towards you instead of just staying in their castle. And the fact that you're you get two harpoons each, so in a unit of three, you get yeah. six. You've yeah. probably got a good chance to get through at least one or two of those attacks, as opposed to hoping for a six to hit, and then you yeah. roll the one one mortal wound for the D three. So you're probably better off. Yeah, probably. I, th I think, yeah, yeah, but I think you are definitely better off. I think, I think uh, you also get. I mean, you don't have to run these as threes. You can run them all as ones, and and do more of a sort of board presence, harassing sort of style. I mean, I just put them as threes. I think just for um, it's easier for Grey Water Fast in terms of buffing up, but you could easily play it sort of like a as sort of like an MSU sort of build, and just basically control the table while you have three two blocks of thirty just. Uh, um basically you don't want to mess with so I, I you could you could style this however you like yeah that used to be popular you'd have like six or eight is individual yeah. chariots just absolutely clogging up the board being annoying you didn't care how many drops you were but you just those big fat bases just did a lot of control yeah absolutely huge bases i think yeah they're, they're the griffin bases aren't they so um yeah. 120 um, 120 ovals aren't they yeah so uh, yeah, they clog up a lot of space. So yeah, you could definitely do some shenanigans uh, just doing that pinning, especially with the orders and how they work as well. So yeah, I really like them. Who are you hoarfrosting? I'm hoarfrosting the dark arc of uh, course says, um, and generally if they've got the blades on them already, I'll be doing twos to hit, or or three or twos to wound, and then I'll all that attack. So there'll be what threes and twos, four attacks each. You got no save. Um, and then any ones to hit them are a mortal wound back. So are you double blading or are you blading and hand bow? I I had it as as one of each. So um but it de it all depends if you want to go more combat I think you go just you just embrace the uh, extra attacks um and then you just go all melee. Yeah, yeah I mean I, for 270 I... that could literally de destroy any uh, unit in the game. Um yeah, you because can quite of, content with that. Because of Tanabral Blades. Yeah. Without it, and maybe not so much. Uh, you still got, you know, four attacks each. You can if if you counter charge with them, you're getting plus one rend. 
you know, there's there's play. It, it is four and four, obviously, with all out attack, it's threes and fours. Uh, yeah, if you, you get if yeah, if you, but if you get roared at, you obviously can't issue that, so you're back to three. But yeah, I probably like the double blades better, personally. I think. Yeah. Anything yeah, else you'd uh, mention of this list? No, I think I think it's just this is I think as balanced as you can go um, with sort of the dark elves right now. Um, I mean, you can dark shards are 120 points at the minute. I, I you could. Alternatively, I think the build here is you then go slightly more towards Dark um, Black Guard, start building them up. Basically, it'll be a new Phoenix Guard build. So um, you could basically cut out 30 Corsairs, put another 20 um, Black Guard in, and then you've basically got a, an unkillable unit on 4-up save. Um, uh, and then basically your Sorcerers can't be killed because they're all on 4-up ward saves as well. So yeah, I... I that there's lots of ways you can tweak this to to your style. What's the before we move on to the other list? Uh, what's the mm -hmm. difference? That what's the key difference between this being a grey water list and a mist harbin list? I think it just depends how you want to play it. I mean, this could um, your grey water style is more of a castle just gun line, so you utilize the chariots. You'd probably make those corsairs the shooting corsairs. And you basically just sit in a castle, use the knights to screen and a charybdis, and basically anyone that goes near your castle, you shoot, um, uh, you, you basically gun down, and then you use the charybdis to basically try and battle shock everyone off. Where the mist harvest list is more of a control list in terms of the board control. You actually start pushing out, using the drake knights to pin, use the corsairs more as objective holders, uh, and 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 basically it's a bit more of an aggressive style. And just to confirm, folks, it's ten black guard, not thirty. I tell you what, though, I'm re I'm I'm rereading that steel and sorcery rule on the black guard. The unit getting a four plus ward if it's within three inches of a sorceress, not your not your drag not your dragon sorceress, and then it gives the sorceress a four plus ward. That's pretty yeah. good. That's really yeah. good. Yeah, that's that's now your your honored retitude, but basically now. You just have that, and you can sit all your sorcerers behind that, and you've got a better um, bodyguard than you ever had before. Can you stabby stabby them as well? Yeah, you can. If you if you want to, you can stabby stabby yeah. them for the plus two to the cast. You probably don't want to, but you could. Yeah. Right? You wouldn't stab, you stab them. It, yeah. you, I, uh, you wouldn't. I wouldn't stab them. No, I'd 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 probably be cutting at least one of them, and then just heroic healing, and just basically stagger them out. Yeah, but yeah, I right. mean, this sort of list, you could easily take sorcerers out and put battle mages in, and you can. There's lots of ways you could tweak that. I mean, you could take ten so one sorceress out, and just put ten um, dread spears in to cut. So, um, th th there's a lot of points in here that you can actually do. Uh, you can play around with. Yeah, I actually don't mind having. I wouldn't mind actually changing that one of that sorceresses to a um, a battle mage in like fierce protection or something like that. But that's the cool thing, right? You can tweak and change this as much as you want. You know, for me personally, I'd probably run more of the Drake spawn chariots for the mortal wounds on the impact, but do whatever you want. Like you do, you tweak and modify how you want to. These are just examples as opposed to this is the tournament winning list. That's going to go five and oh, um, this is the other one. Hopefully there's no mistakes on this one. This is a Mist Harvin, and I can't wait to hear from you how you do this one. It's a Dreadlord and Black Dragon with the General Draconic Blood Pact. You've got the Sorceress with the Tanabal Blades and the Anklet of Epiphany. You've got a Sorceress with Hoarfrost. Surprise you have no Merciless Blizzard. Um, I'll, I'll find out why, I'm sure, very soon. You've got one, two, three, four, five units of Drakespawn Knights, two units of three Drakespawn Chariots, and then uh, two units of 10 Black Guard coming in exactly on 2K. Yeah, so again, this is, well, again, this is Misshaven, so it can be a, basically has that threat to be a, an alpha list. Um, so this is sitting at a three drop, um, so it'll be slightly more than that, probably a four, four or five drop. Um, yeah. And yeah, it is a, it, this has the potential to just alpha you um, quite, quite, quite aggressively. Um, so you've got 
but it also has the potential to be um, a, lot, a lot slower play and utilizing the Drake, um, Drake Spawn Knights to, to basically pin. So you basically utilize this in waves, maybe put in two five knights, send them in on the three up save, just go pin their screens back. Once they've cleared that, you then send next two, next two, and then once they're ready, then you send the chariots in to actually then do the, the actual impact uh, main hits. Um, the Dreadlord Black Dragon um, could do a lot of damage. Um, so he will be sitting basically in the middle army, so, um, surrounded by all these knights and chariots. Um, if you want to come in and, and try and mess with the uh, sort of castle, uh, you can. But then as soon as uh, I'm ready to go, the whole thing can basically unpack and, and do a lot of um, a lot of damage. Um, the black guard there just basically to sit on the point with the sorceresses and basically just have that sort of back aboard presence holding the points while all the knights and all the um, chariots uh, go actually go harassing. Yeah, I like it. And and again, you know, you could you could make one of the oh no, you can't no no the fierce protection has to be on a human unit. Bloody hell. It, like, it does. Yeah, I, if I, if only I was looking at it, yeah. But you could easily put cavaliers in here instead, um, and and utilize that. Um or a steam yeah, tank. The, the, or a, or a or steam a, tank. Put have, have a steam tank at the back. You have like your your dreadlord and black dragon in the middle, knights surrounding it, and then you've got a steam tank ethereal at the back. Well, what you can do is because a steam tank commander is mounted, yes. he can move 2d6 <laughs> with Miss Haven. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> yeah, is it a mount? Is, 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 is it counted as a mount? Yeah, because he's, uh, I believe so. Not the normal steam tank, but the commander is a mount. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the, the commander. All right, I'll, I'll have to check the tapes on that one. But if that's true, that's not bad because the steam tank is only move of eight. And... Yeah. Like you could do gray water fastness. This is this is obviously a sidetrack. You could go gray water for it, but if you put yeah. a whole army of steam tanks in Mist Harvin for the two d six move, assuming that's true, I'm going to check the tapes. Yeah, you can um, check. No, no, it's, it's definitely right. I'm looking at it now. All right, all right, all right, all right. I, I believe. Page you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, I can see it. Yep, yep. Mount this steam tank is gone. Yep, it's mount. Cool. Right, giddy up, <laughs> giddy up, giddy up, giddy up. Yeah. So it's a base move of fifteen. Um. <laughs> I mean, it has potential, doesn't it? Send it in, unrendable. Um, uh, as, soon then, as, we then, yeah. as soon as we finish here, I'm going to Games Workshop. I'm going to buy a bunch of Steam <laughs> Tanks. I've, I've, still, I've got the original steel ones. I've got two or three of them. So uh, Yeah, the yeah. little tiny ones. I hate them. Yeah, I've got two of them. No, I hate no, them. They're no, so it, small. It, no, mine's like this sort of size, about nearly like 10 bloody kilograms. Just, you know, clubs oh. all over it. The proper, uh, yeah. No, no, no. The yeah. generation before it was a lot smaller. Like there were uh, there were steam tanks, but they were tiny. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. That's a you, you got to pin the thing out of it, and it's a weapon. You yeah. just like peg it. And... <laughs> yeah, exactly. So okay, so your your sorceresses uh, hang out with your black guard. They're obviously defending. They're holding objectives. They're keeping the backfield. You've got this uh, mobile castle where your black your dreadlord and black dragon is supporting all of the drakespawn knights and the chariots. When you want to release them, you can just spread them out across the board. Go harass of enemies. Go fight together. Whatever you need to do, obviously good good saves on the Drake spawns. Why not reinforce the Drake spawns? Why not? Because you're probably actually way more than four drops. Like this, if you battle Reg and Antorian yeah, Rikers, yeah. and, and her actualize, you're, you're probably seven, seven. seven? Yeah. yeah. So you yeah, could I mean, you could easily do it. Yeah. Yeah, you could reinforce this to go two units of ten Drake spawn knights. That would get you yeah, down to like five drops. Because I believe how it's written at the minute, those. Drake's board chariots aren't reinforced because it's just it's just a unit no. of three, isn't it? it yeah. Uh, so, let, let me uh, let me check. Let me check. But yeah, I don't I don't think they count as the double reinforcements. Yeah. Um. So yeah, you could easily do ten, two lots of tens, probably. Yeah. You probably yeah, lose some just... attacks. You probably lose some attacks because the coherency, but. Um, if you wanted to get the drops down, you could definitely get it. I, I, look, I, I still think the units of five is probably better, but if you were worried about drops, you could definitely double re reinforce them yeah. to be to be tens. But yeah, I mean, like these chariots, I mean, there's what six you're rolling six dice each, um, and then with the knights near within three, every three up will be three mortal wounds, so that's 12, 12 mortal wounds on on one hit. On, on the charge um so yeah it will start absolutely melting stuff 
I just noticed another mistake. The Drake Spawn Chariots, folks, I just copied the, the, the format from War Scroll Builder. So there's the old points for the, war, the Chariots, but it is still a 2,000 point list. So again, don't at me. It is correct. Yeah. I'm just a potato uh, trying to work on a, a consistent War Scroll Builder that's using old rules for a new list. But it is 2K on the nose. I'm like, why is why is one unit 270 and one's 240? Like, I can't, because I'm an idiot. Yeah. Cool. I, I like this as well. Again, you know, if you wanted to feel like this is too many elf units, you could definitely scale this back a little bit. You could put some of the cavaliers in. You could uh, get some of the fusiliers. You could put some steel helms in if you feel like the, the black the black guard are too expensive for you. Uh, you could get a battle mage in. You could get uh, like there's so many options you could play around with. If you want to get a hurricanum to do a bunch of mortal wounds as your castle's moving forward, you could absolutely do that. A lot of I mean, movement yeah. here. Yeah, I mean the, that's the great thing about Miss Haven is it's not linked. It's not tied to any um, any races, so anyone gets this bonus. So um, it's just yeah, whatever you'd like to put in, it, it works. Anything else about this list? Um, no, not particularly. I mean, I, I'm just I'm, I'm very happy that you know a lot of these units I'd never even thought about playing in the old book. You know. Drake's board chariots and black guard and and even the black dragon. So um, I'm I'm glad now that uh, you know that they're out there and now viable. I used to run a I used to run a dreadlord on black dragon and Drake's born knights in my tempest eye because I could get uh, I can't remember the command trait. I used to get like some good. some good stuff. You could re-roll charges, couldn't you? Within twelve or that was the banner, but there was another one. There was a there was a bunch of little cool shenanigans, yeah. but I never. Um, it never worked out in the end for me. Like yeah. it was fine, but the gun, the guns in Tempest Eye were just so much better. <laughs> but uh, you're right. Like you're right. Like the diversity in lists is just superior. You're seeing things back on the table. Black Guard, you you rarely used to see. Um, Drake Spawn Chariots, you certainly wouldn't see them as many as what you've put in your list. Um, yeah. And Drake Spawn Knights at 110 points in the old book were just screening units at best. Like you're reading yeah. a lot of damage out of them. This is this is some decent tech. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, these are what now two attacks each, um, threes and threes, rend two, two damage each. You know, it, it will it will punch a hole in in a lot of stuff. So even yeah, good, uh... even the mount, I think the mounts got rend. So the jaws, the jaws on the night on the knights never used to have rend, and now it does have rend. So yeah, it does. Yeah, uh... they got three attacks each. Yeah. Hmm. So some good stuff in there. There's some some good stuff. Yeah, so each 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 knight can theoretically do seven damage, and you got five. Yeah, so it's, it's a theoretically it can do a lot. Yeah, it's like the old cold one knights. I feel like this is like Thunder Lizard, <laughs> cold one knights, all the all the attacks under the yeah. sun. Um, that's cool. No, I'm excited. Like cities of Sigma, like there's so many cool options, and even though you got no new units. You got zero, you got zip. In fact, okay. elves got less units than the old book. I still feel like there's some good viable builds. There's some interesting combinations. You know, executioners finally have a place. Unfortunately, the sorceress on Black Dragon is still questionable at best. Um, yeah. But like, this, there's some good stuff in here. It's, it's an interesting one where they lost probably the most out of all the other um, races, but they actually probably gained the most in all the actual um, new war scrolls. So I think they've got actually the most viable war scroll flight sort of selection than any other, other races. So I think they're in a really good place. Yeah. Yeah. Although they didn't lose the same amount as the free guild, free guild got a lot of direct replacements while you just flat out lost stuff. So, yeah. um, so yeah, I'll, I'll give you that one. Is there any good allies? Is there anyone that you would consider as an ally because there's no coalition anymore? Um, and we do have like every ally under the sun except for Seraphon. So we can do Daughters, we can do Lumineth, we can do KO, we can do IDK, we can do literally everyone who's not Seraphon. Um, yeah, I, mean, the... I think there's yeah, I think there's still plenty of options. I, I, I still think Stormcast will always have a place in, in cities. I think. The output they're able to do in some lists, you know, the old, you know, the old Forminators, um, uh, Forminators sort of Paladors, 
um, Vanguard, whatever you want to use, um, they all still can do a lot of damage um, and and probably provide a bit more different movement than than what uh, the other normal lists can can normally do. A normal cities list. So yeah, I, definitely has. Um, go on. Yeah, like like I, I mentioned this on the other discussion, but for me, the thing that's missing for cities is movement outside of Miss Tarvin. Don't at me, yeah. um, but. Like that's where like Canero might play. Uh, the Celestine Prime might have a play. Um, your Tree Reverence might have a play. Just some movement shenanigans throughout the game, especially in the late game. There's not a lot available to you. Um, I, I wouldn't even mind in your list. I wouldn't even mind like a unit of um, Tempestors, like a unit of two Pente te Pentest yeah, yeah, Tempestors. Yeah, absolutely. Very nice. Mm. Yeah, I think I think a block. Like, I, I always keep talking about paladors and all that but six paladors in there would would quite happily sit in there and and just teleport around causing havoc um yeah it just it, it would work as a as a yeah I, I think stormcast is probably the best fit just because it, it the war scrolls are good and you, they don't need the synergies of of the city's builds yeah i i do like the tree the, the tree revs for me they're just like that yeah. little unit they can do whatever it wants it can be screened then it can teleport it can be annoying it could score me battle tactics there's a lot of cool options but where the points come from because it seems like we are at 2k already yeah i mean but i think i think there's nothing there that's i think over costed in in terms of cities at the minute i mean i'd quite happily I think you could take out any of that and, and, and replace it, and I still think it'd be a viable list. Uh, I just think I think that's how the Dark Elves have been pointed at the minute. I think they're they're very good place uh, right now. Yeah, I think for you, if anything, your points go down, not go up. Um, I don't think there's I, anything I think, yeah. in your list. I don't think there's anything in the Dark Elves that is undercosted. I think I think the only one that might be is like the Corsair sort of side of the build. If if it starts mincing people uh that could easily go to like 100 or 110 points each because they're only 90 um uh, so yeah I could, I could see them going up yeah i'm not i'm not so completely against it dark riders at 150 feel very over costed like I, I pay heavy, like yeah. yeah one i know they can they can shut off inspiring presence and commands but it's on a five up it's a one in three shot i feel like you are overpaying on that one but anyway i think the point is is that you don't have many points changes and they're probably going down, if anything. Maybe my last burning question for you, and then we'll kind of bring this home, is when Cities finally gets introduced to the meta. So I know a lot of tournaments probably won't allow you to use this until it's on the shelf. Obviously, there's a lot of units, especially the free guild stuff that's not out yet. Yes, you can TTS it, but just generally at a, a traditional tournament, it's probably not going to hit till probably Christmas approximately, uh, maybe sooner, maybe later, but let's just ballpark Christmas. Where do you think it's entering in the meta? Do you think it's going to be the next 5 and 0 you know, things are broken like it's Gits and Beasts of Chaos. Is it entering it like this three and two type performance? Is it a four and one? Like, where where is it entering and and its status in the middle? Yeah, I think it's actually sitting in a in a very good place in terms of where. I don't think I think it's a resolved uh, some of the broken stuff like the Hurricane and right now or um, the. Um, I think it's coming in at that sort of bang on three two two three mark where. I think good play will get it to a four-one, and and potentially with the right sort of depends how the meta shifts, you can push to that five-zero. I think it is that sort of bang on uh, list. That there's nothing here that is going to blow you off the table turn one. However, um, there's enough shenanigans in here and enough um, rewarding play uh, for people who actually want to sort of dive into this book um, that I think you will get good results out of. I think you could easily get four ones. Um, uh, if you if you put your mind to it sort of thing yeah i think when they first start entering the tournament scene they're probably going to do a lot of two threes and three twos because yeah. it's very techy and it's gonna there's gonna be a lot of mistakes along the way so if you're practicing the book now you'll probably get through the learning curve but i think there's just a lot of techy especially like when you issue orders at what point and how you get the most out of it and it took ages for the first cities list to go five and oh. I remember when the first cities book came out, it was months before the first five and oh. And it was because of that, there's so many war scrolls to refine it into like a top tier list was really tough. And 
I, I feel like there's so much techiness in this one that it might take us a little longer. Um, yeah, I, I, I totally agree with that. And I think it's actually one of the few books where you can't really um, sort of like not meta chase. You, 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 you need to understand the book yourself and actually build your lists yourself to make it work. It's not a here's a list. This goes five zero. You have you have to actually put the work in with it with the cities to 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 make that happen. Yeah, it's like Lumineth without the crutch that is Techless and Sentinels. Yeah. I, yeah, I, exactly. I won't apologize. Like like the super techie <laughs> army, they just had a yeah. massive crutch for three years. Freddie, anything else you want to add to this? I, th I think we could talk cities for a long time. And no, folks, that there will be a Dwarden chat. There's already a, a, a human-focused chat already on the channel, and there definitely will be more as they kind of hit the tournament scene and we kind of unpack and we kind of revisit where we landed. And obviously there will be erratas and FAQs and maybe points changes at the four- to six-week mark, which is traditionally where Games Workshop revisit and put out a battle scroll. But... Any closing comments, any final thoughts that you, maybe we didn't touch on um, as we looked at the book? Um, no, nothing for me. I'm just I'm just super excited to, uh, to be able to see all, all these models on the table. Um, I just wish I'd be able to do the painting justice on, on some of these new, uh, new sculpts. A lot of metal, though. There's a lot of metal, which I think is probably very yeah. forgiving compared to, like, the old Free Girl, which had, like, the ribbons and yeah. lots of weird details, so... Yeah, hopefully I could do it justice. I believe in you. Yeah. Any sh any shout outs? I know you you're from your, your Derby crew, and um, we talked a little bit about, about your homies. Any shout outs you want to make before we kind of bring this home? Um, yeah, I mean, just to the the team bash lads uh, in, in Derby. Uh, uh, they they like to. Uh, they don't normally listen to me. I, I, I'm I'm normally the one who just plays the bonkers list. So, uh, but yeah, uh, shout out to them, and, and of course the, the team lit lads uh, um, in the UK scene. So uh, yeah, uh, and then everyone else, yeah, in the UK scene, and um, hopefully I'll get to uh, go to Australia at some point and start playing uh, some of you guys again. Uh, I I just saw just before we logged on, I saw um, it might have been Adam. I can't remember who it was. They uh, they commented on Twitter formerly now X. Party at the all points. One of them had like um party at the all points tights. Um, yeah. and they're like, Oh, we should get team lit tights. I'm like, Oh, good lord, please. I do not want to see uh, yeah. you guys it's, it's, in it's like a bit too bright. Yeah, <laughs> I don't want to see you in bicycle shorts at tournaments. Yeah. Like, please keep the yoga pants at home. Yeah, it's very yellow. Uh, yeah, but uh, it, I, I don't I don't look too bad in it, so can't, can't moan too badly. All right. Well, I'll keep an eye on Twitter to make sure that, like, if there's any um, bicycle shorts coming, we'll, we'll get yeah. to see it. But the sexiness is definitely in their book. Don't worry about bike shorts. It's in here. Um, thank you so much, Freddie. This has been really insightful. And, again, we could keep talking about this forever. Um, if you haven't ordered this yet and you, you, you are thinking about it, I do have some affiliates. So, uh warp fire minis as well as elements if you want to grab it from me and and help the channel there's a link in the episode description but otherwise freddie this has been really really beneficial um it's helped me think about this at least from an elf side because i'm not really a big elf fan i don't really own a lot of elves and the elves that i owned are all legend like literally every <laughs> single elf unit thing. i had is now gone so um yeah. now you've given me some food for thought which is which is great and um i'm curious to see how this unpacks along the way yeah it'll be a, it'll be a good uh, couple of months now to see uh, see how what everyone else comes up with yeah, it'll be great to see what, what people bring up. And maybe there is some shenanigans we haven't talked about. And if you listening to this and you've worked out some shenanigans that we haven't talked about, maybe there's some secret assassin builds that we haven't talked about because there's no assassins in our list. Uh, no, maybe you have some shenanigans around Dread Spears or something else. You know the deal. Leave it in the comment section. I'd be curious to hear from you uh, what you're thinking. And um, yeah, we all learn together. But um, Freddie, again, thank you so much for your time. I uh, hope you enjoyed this discussion, folks, and uh, stay tuned for part three. And if you haven't heard the human video, go check it out immediately after this and uh, listen to us about humans and free guilds. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thanks for hanging around until the end. I hope you enjoyed that video and you walked away with a few new ideas. Now, if you did, I would love it if you pressed like on the video as well as left me a comment with your thoughts. 
The conversation will continue over on Discord and the link is down below in the episode description. I also want to give a massive shout out to the AOS Coach patrons and YouTube members who are supporting the channel and the growth that you're seeing here. So cheers, you are all bloody legends. And until next time, don't roll a double one on a spell cast.